Um, I'm going to start with a land acknowledgement to open our meeting. The Washington State Historical Society is headquartered in Tacoma on the traditional lands of the Tuala people who have stewarded this land throughout generations. We pay respect to their elders past and present. Um, I'd like to then uh, do a round table of introductions so that we all know who we are at the table and the public can also. There we go. So why don't we just start with Scott quickly and then we'll move around. David. David Sinjak, the capital project coordinator for the State Historical Society. And maybe we'll go to Jay next. I'm Jay Mortensen. I'm the director of Heritage Outreach and the manager of the grant program. Thank you. And Jennifer. So, oh, okay. Allison Campbell, Heritage Outreach Manager, just some extra hair hands today. There we go. <laughs> and I'm Jennifer Kilmer. I'm the director of Heritage State Historical Society. So, thank you, Historical Society staff, for all your work to put this together and support us. Susan, right? Yeah. Susan Johnson, with the City of Tacoma, and Historic Preservation Board. Katie Fair, uh, Director of the Kittitaka County Historical Museum in Ellensburg, but I sit on the panel on behalf of the Washington Museum Association. And I'm Freya Liggett, uh, Curator of History at the Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture in Spokane. Hey, I'm John Ball. Um, I'm the former director of the Echo Valley Museum, but now the Archivist and research story for the Yakima Valley Museum. I'm Jennifer Meisner. I'm King County's Historic Preservation Officer. That's all of us. Great. Right. So oh. our, and then we have our panelists. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Angela? Oh, Angela Neller. I'm the curator at the Wanapum Heritage Center in Beverly, Washington. Thank you. Terry? Oh, oh, no. Hello. Oh, no. Can't hear you. Muted. Terry, we can't hear you, and you froze. <laughs> so the timing. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Do we have a motion book to deny that? Okay. I not heard stuff. Okay. So weird. Okay, okay, Terry, we're going to back to you as soon as you want to freeze. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, so Jennifer Kilmer is with us today, and um, she's going to give us a few remarks following just some, um, do you want to just, the introductions, is that for me to read or is that for the staff? Um, well, I'll, I'll just read through it. Yeah, just a quick introduction to um, the process a little bit. Um, we, the State Historical Society received 44 applications in the first stage of the review process. They were reviewed by staff to determine whether they met the basic eligibility requirements. Nine applications either did not meet those requirements or withdrew at that point. Um, and then uh, the remaining uh, 33 applicants who were reviewed over the last six weeks by the advisory panel members working independently, they evaluated and scored them based on the contents of the submitted applications using established evaluation criteria and scoring values. So today's meeting is the culmination of all of that review work, and we appreciate very much the time that all the panelists have given to, to, uh, to the review and getting to this point in the process. Uh, so Jennifer. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say, as I have said, I think at every meeting, at the museum that I've been to since we reopened. It's so nice to see everyone's faces and to be gathered together in person. And but also to have this fancy new technology where we can have folks across the state join us. Um, how nice that not everybody has to drive to the location just to listen in. So welcome to everybody who's who's listening in today on the process. Um, I do just I want to say welcome. I want to thank the, the advisory panel for the work that you've done. I know it takes a long time to review all the applications, and it's this volunteer thing that you do, and um, I really appreciate it, all the work that you do and the work that you'll do today to um, rank the list. The, the sort of second half of the process that Mary Grace just laid out that I think all of you know, but maybe folks who are listening in may not know, once the list is decided by the panel, the rank, the ranking is decided. That is then forwarded to 
Um, OSM, as part of our funding request, the, the, the Historical Society's funding request to the governor and the legislature. <clears throat> the governor will develop his budget, and then the legislature, when they convene, will develop their budget. And our hope, fingers and toes crossed, is that everything that's on the list that's folded by this panel gets funded. Um, I work, um, I think, very hard during a legislative session to advocate for the list of projects because, and I can do so with confidence because of the work that you do. I know that all of the projects that are on that list are gonna be projects that are gonna really impact historic preservation and heritage interpretation in the state. I know they're gonna be ready to go. I know they're gonna be projects that are gonna ultimately be successful, successful. And that's because of all of the advanced work that you're doing. And so I can speak confidently about that list and why it should be funded in the state. Um, I also, by way of explanation, I'm not gonna stay for the whole meeting. Technically, I'm the person that if there's any kind of protest or anything, it comes to me. So I'm not really involved in the deliberations, but I'll have to be able to do that process separately. I'm gonna sit and listen for a little while, and then I'm gonna go do stuff. <laughs> so, um, but um, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Okay, um, we're going to start out with a um, staff summary of the applications received and um, data, and then we'll um, review some to sort of um, set up for our discussion, and then we're going to launch into it. So, absolutely, Jay. Thank you, Mary Grace, and I want to say thank you for sharing two cycles in a row. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, so we'll just start with a um, quick summary of this round of applications, $13,319,265 in requests. Um, as Mary Grace mentioned, 33 grants moved uh, into the uh, panel review phase of the process. So um, those are the ones that the panel reviewed. And the average amount, um, about $400,000. Uh, but we really have I think our smallest grant was around 21,000 and we had several $1 million requests. So they really do range um, all over. We have a map uh, that shows the locations of these 33 applicants just to get a sense of where they are. And then I think, do we want to share, David, the, the list before we move forward? Stop here. And so we've um, put together uh, all of the panelists' um, scores and put together an initial ranking list uh, for consideration. Um, and this is the order that the initial scores uh, uh, have, have fallen out. And so we will be, as Mary Grace will soon mention, we'll start from kind of the top and move um, our way down. Um, and then as the panelists adjust their scores, we'll be able to live adjust them here so that um, at the end of the discussion, we'll have a fresh order if the order changes. So, um, and then we've got some running totals um, on the right-hand side there, just to kind of keep track as the money is awarded. So hopefully we can keep everyone on the, on the same page. So I think that's it from us, Mary Grace. Okay, back to you. Good. Um, so some notes on our review discussion. Um, first note is that each advisory panel was asked to identify if they had any association with applicants for their proposed projects that could be seen as a conflict of interest, such as being a member of the board or professionally associated or employed by or having other financial interests. So there were six conflicts of interest identified by five panelists, um, and those panelists have not scored those applications, and they will not participate in those discussions. Will you actually want us to leave the room if we have a conflict? Would you just like, not be present? Or just sit in the, go sit in the audience area, or if you would like to take a walk around, right? we'll send out an email. Gather you. So, <laughs> okay. Um, any questions there? I think if we could have Terry introduce himself. Oh, good, Terry, are you with us again? 
Yes, total rookie mistake. Sorry. <laughs> My laptop powered off. <laughs> so this happened to all of us. Yeah. Can you just give us your name and your professional affiliation? Absolutely. My name is Terry Badger. I'm the Deputy State Archivist at the Washington State Archives. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next point, we will not be making awards based on contingencies. In other words, you can't say, yeah, we want to give them, you know, what they're the funding that they've applied for, as long as they do this, or as long as they provide this additional documentation. What's in the application is what we have to work with, and that is what we will be basing our decisions on today. Um, and we'll discuss the applications in the order of the initial ranking that David put up just a moment ago, um, and panelists can adjust their scoring uh, during the following, the dis actually following the discussion, um, if you desire. Uh, the scoring adjustments should be stated verbally to staff. We'll, we'll have a discussion and then we'll pause. We'll give folks a minute if you need it, as long as you need it, you know, within reason. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, transmit verbally, uh, communicate to, to David, and he will adjust them on that sheet. Um, we're going to ask you to raise hands so that we're, we're not complicating the audio, you know, so that we can hear everybody's comments. Um, and we'll do our best to just keep track of who's got their hands up, including you folks on 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 camera. Yeah. On the, keep an eye on that. Um, let's see. Just to get ready, my suggestion is that um, you pull up your uh, reviewer um, windows panes on your laptop. And there is a search bar, so you can put in your, um, the other thing you should bring up, probably each of you received your own, a summary of your own scores. So if you've got that ready, you can follow along the order. So the first one's the city of Bellingham. I put in the search bar, pull up your Bellingham notes, and we'll go. And then we'll just search each one and pull it up before, before we start the next discussion. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's everything. I'm missing. Yeah. Okay. Just just another sort of strategy note about you know, our time today and how we're going to use it. We're starting with the highest scoring, the collectively highest scored, and um, not to slight those at all, but we're all agreed on that. So let's not spend a lot of time there. <laughs> the stuff on the bottom. And the stuff in the middle really should take most of our time for two reasons. One, we want to be sure that we're able to give Jennifer that confidence level, right, in all of the applications that we choose to approve. And number two, for those who score particularly low, this is a teaching opportunity. It's a learning moment for them. Uh, we have a lot of collective experience at the table, and we want to see them succeed, right, in the future, if not today. So. Um, so let's spend our time there if we can. Um, so if I cut you off in the middle of a speech about how wonderful the application is, <laughs> please don't hold it against me. It's in the interest of everyone's time as well as the applicants for the documents. And I'll just do one more note that we'll plan to take a break around 11, 11, 10. We'll have lunch at noon and then we'll take another break in the afternoon just so people can walk around a bit, yeah. use the restroom. Yep. So, um, We'll be keeping an eye on the clock as well. Okay, and if anybody needs a break before the appointed time, just call it. Um, I have no other thoughts. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? All right, let's roll. All right, our first one is the city of Bellingham, um, Old City Hall Building Envelope Preservation. And I think with each with each application, David's going to bring up a little informational slide. They've requested three hundred eighty thousand um, in funding uh, for envelope and structural repairs to the city hall. The first thing I want to I want to dive into is what the heritage component of the project, and that 
is going to require me to give you the link. Does anybody want to speak to this right off the top? In addition to the historic preservation, there is um, museum space mm -hmm. within it. So same part of the welcome thing. So the city is the owner, but there is museum space also have multiple structures. I don't see any um, reason not to fund it. Uh, it's uh, definitely the follows what they do. They're also well-run institution. Um, the city can maintain it over a long period of time. Uh, it seems like they have done their homework as to what needs to be done. And uh, I don't think really this needs too much more than that. Right. We consistently rank this very high. Is there something about it that is particularly outstanding? I, I think for me, um, the fact that they were planning to video uh, a lot of the work and then use that as a teaching tool was really just a fabulous idea and a great way to um, you know, give this project additional ripples in the public benefit. I think they have an incredible track record of being successful with their projects. And I really love that they have the partnership between the um, Museum Foundation and the city. I think it's really effective, and um, this was definitely one of my highest ranked projects. Awesome. All right, let's move right along. Um, okay, we got to figure out how to do a quick search here. So while she's doing that, I think the search for some fun summarize getting our work. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Big Harbor from the Historical Society requested 227,000 initial foreign rank, you can see there, um, to enclose the open air gallery, um, maritime gallery, which is also kind of part of their current project, which they're working on as well. So it's kind of an extension of their current project. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Sorry, folks. I just got to kind of get into the group here. What did you guys do? Did you just move the next one to me? Just close the one you were looking at. I just closed the one and, and yeah. found the other one. <laughs> you might have gone back to the slide. I think I went back to the slide. This is another one where I think, you know, they've already done a lot of work on the, um, on other vessels and or other maritime artifacts. They actually have created a shelter for this already. And um, as a next step to make it a lot more accessible to the general public and to um, uh, the preservation of the, of the show and go itself. Uh, it seems like it's a good, uh, it's a natural next step. Yeah, I couldn't find anything to take off on this one. <laughs> Frankly, I really viewed it as a continuation of their last funded mm -hmm. project. They they had things were more expensive, and again, they have an incredible record of completing projects. It, the museum is you know well run, and they I think they have their full match in hand. I just think it's a great project. I think, I think for me that was really stuck out. I really thought that their below the waterline um, interpretive strategy was really compelling. Yeah, I think that was yeah. exciting to see. Yeah. Good point. Any other? Okay. Six other you double. I'm just doing this. <clears throat> City of Vancouver is next. Does anyone want to um, speak to it? Vancouver uh, requested $175,000. Their rank is third, 90, almost the 95, and it's a re-roofing of the OO Howard House. Yeah, the schools were consistently high. It's part of the whole, you know, work they're doing on this whole site, and um, it's obviously important building in the site, on the site, and um, pretty straightforward job. 
obviously important because got a decent roof and all that work. Um, I need the day, the day um, couldn't do much more. <laughs> you know, it needs to be done and, and they know what they're doing. And, just took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I had noticed um, modest requests, straightforward, groups are essential. And they're pretty horrible. So, DDS, tax code. All right, we're going to move on. Sammamish Heritage Society um, was our fourth ranked. They requested $176,000 um, to complete a rear house interior. Great photo of the interior. It's on the right and front. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to pick on you, Jennifer. Yeah, I'm happy to say a few words about this one. Um, <clears throat> it is a King County landmark. And um, I, the organization that um, put this application forward and that's doing this project is, is really highly motivated and dedicated, um, very organized. And they have a solid partnership with the city of Sammamish. This is a house that was moved um, onto city property. And this is really a continuation of, of a lot of work that they've already accomplished here. Um, to rehabilitate this really important house and reopen it to the public. So um, I highly recommend funding this. Anyone else want to speak to it? I, I noted um, a strong multi generational kind of emphasis, which was, I thought was excellent. And um, also an intention um, that I hope they follow through on. Um, to uh, kind of move beyond static displays to a really active and more dynamic uh, use. Very good. Very good. All right. I'm going to hold for a second. I think everybody has any other thoughts on this. And our next is Whitman County Historical. <coughs> All right, it's a Pullman. <laughs> uh, $237,000 requested uh, for envelope utility and access improvements for the Pullman Depot. They are currently completed, completing a 2325 request. That's correct. No, that's the number, actually. That's yeah, confusing. The contract number. Yeah. Okay, from D23, which was once they were ranked 25th. So they're currently completing a a 2123 project. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. So they have a, a, a capital grant already that they are hitting on. Correct. Um, does anyone want to speak to this? We had a couple of folks who scored them a little lower. Um, any other folks want to speak up and offer any? Um, this is one where I think I gave them a, a really a um, you know a strong pat on the back for it's not a very large organization and it's a huge project over over a long period uh -huh. of time and they seem to have really been really committed to keeping it going not only because of the grant prior but I would make the next step um, I just uh, my only concern would be that um, hopefully. And this is where I say the benefit of the doubt is hopefully they can continue this into the future. That once you get beyond the, the kind of the fun, so to speak, or the excitement yeah, of sure. restoring the building, that you actually can uh, keep it running and and, uh, and provide really good services. But we don't know that once they do this. So I think it, it needs to be done definitely. Can't seem to find them in my list, but this is the one where they're constructing the viewing platform. No, 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 no sorry. Okay. That's 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 yeah. I know they are a little similar. I, I, I will say I scored them very high for the reasons that John said. Mm -hmm. I just can't find my notes here. Sorry. If, there, if 
we do run into any portal issues, I would recommend hitting a refresh. Refresh. Yes. Um, sometimes things kind of disappear. That's yeah. Um, yeah. Up the system. Yeah, I support this one higher just because it also shared some things in common with the Bellingham and the Gate Harbor project as being a really great um, phase project. I, I think that they've, I think the project seems to have kind of matured through the course mm -hmm. of the last phase and it, it's just nice to see it going. Yeah. And, Keep going. Keep, Keep going moving. in nice chunks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Progress Washington Trust for Solar Preservation. Mm -hmm. Re roofing and solar installation of the Stinson Green Mansion, which is in Seattle. They requested $320,000. Um, and then I'm going to show you. No, that was number six. Um, and two. I'm assuming what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Certainly has good preservation consultants. So yeah. <laughs> Trying to see. Can you look at that Freya? Do you think it's just? I know. It's <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm always looking over Chris's shoulder. <laughs> well, I'll just jump in and say that they definitely have a knowledgeable and, and capable staff, and they're they're excellent stewards of this building. Um, it's a City of Seattle landmark, so the work will be reviewed and approved by the Seattle Landmarks Commission. Um, I just think they, you know, it, it, it really does take a lot of energy for them to maintain this, yeah. this incredible resource, and they, they do a great job, and they continue to, you know, make sure it's open to the public, and, you know, they maintain, a, you know, a modest collection of the families. You know artifacts in the in the building, so I highly recommend funding this to continue maintaining it. They you know they have to practice with the pooch. Yes, yes. yes. And they do. Yeah. <laughs> mindful of that, and they're doing really beautiful things. It's mm -hmm. amazing to watch this building over the last for more than a decade. You know, just the gradual, uh, persistent, progressive improvement and restoration and thoughtful um, care. So I, I think it's a great project. Um, and it really is, I think it's the final project in this long series of preservation work on the building. So it keeps the chipmunks out or the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> there when we have the squirrels. <laughs> 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 and the people picketing outside. Yeah. <laughs> New groups help with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then let's move on. Uh, very brief. I'll just make a quick please note that the, while the meeting is being recorded, I'm also taking notes. So if there are any concerns that you would like staff to kind of help shepherd, should they be um, awarded, um, please go ahead and feel free to state those and I will, I will note them down. Squirrels. Squirrels. Yep. Never mind. <laughs> I thought you said squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Not squirrels, yeah. Squirrels. Yeah. Forget the squirrels. Write that down. Squirrels. Yeah. Squirrels. 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 All right. Our next application is the Tacoma City Association College Board of Clubs. <laughs> <laughs> The project um, for $203,000, um, well, requesting requesting $203,000 to go toward the redevelopment of the Nettie Asbury House to create community space for gathering and civil rights and transportation. This was a, one of the more interesting projects mm -hmm. as far as I was concerned, just because it was, a, um, you know, they had a real, long history of, of um uh, with Nettie uh and her her in um all the things that she had done and then the house itself that had gone into a little bit of less than uh wonderful uh, uh use and condition and the fact that they brought in the community to be involved and the fact that they're planning to use it not just as a house but as a as an interpretive center for this and in that neighborhood um, it's unfortunate, I think, that which has nothing to do with the grant, that the neighborhood itself is kind of, is 
kind of the whole site is compromised in the sense there are all these buildings around it, but mm -hmm. the fact that it's still there and still has a presence, um, I thought it was a, um, you know, a neat project. It's a, it's a, um, it's not a huge project. They're not a huge group, but uh, what they want to do and, and the fact of the history of the place and, and whatnot is a lot, um, has a lot going for it. Um, I had in my notes a couple of things that I appreciate that they consider it, and this is a quote from the application, a community-led restoration project. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, that was the thing, yeah. yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, it speaks volumes to the organization's goals and their perspective and their approach. Um, and that they put a lot of thought into the interpretive development mm -hmm. before the building. Like, they're, they're thinking, you know, deeply about how they're going to use the public and build the building before they start thinking about more of the scale or um, not that that's secondary, but I think they really have to put that thought into the future of the um, They're shaping program content toward a co-created community design. I just I, I just think it's so really strong. This is one where the historical significance is really driving the whole project goal mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. what they're just trying to accomplish in general. I thought it was really strong for that reason. Yep, and lots of community support. Mm -hmm. Tons. And, right. and, and beyond now, too. They've got a national trust and um, an NEH group. Mm -hmm. Great. And for an all-volunteer organization, that's, mm -hmm. that's really telling. Yeah. All right. Number, number eight. This is eight. Sweetie. Yeah. Can it talk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ellensburg. They've requested two hundred and forty-four thousand dollars for repairs, upgrades, and seismic retrofits to the Cadwell building. Look at those bloopy windows. <laughs> yeah, it's a great building. It really is. Yeah. Um, anybody want to speak to this one? Um, they have strong backing from the historical society in the city of Ellensburg that I think contributes to their organizational capacity for this project. And they have a well documented phased plan for their improvements, um, kind of on down the line, which also gives me some confidence. I think they've done a good job of, of identifying, and um, it's not just, I think the building's falling apart. They've kind of identified the detail and what needs to be done and how they can solve the problems. Mm -hmm. I just had one, it's just more of a question. It's not really a, a, a thing, but I just wondered if, if there was any uh, plans for um, the building expansion in another phase on the road. Mm -hmm. just, that's just a question more than anything, because I think that over time they might benefit from that um, to um, get this done. And then the next phase maybe is to expand a little bit. But, but I think for this project, but there's any, any reason not to do this. Yeah, I agree that it's very well planned. They completed a conditions assessment report. They've engaged Pioneer Masonry, the experts in masonry yeah. restoration. Yeah. And I think there's a clear budget and good project. I love that mm -hmm. there's an anticipated budget for the next phase already. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. They've lined it out. Mm -hmm. I have a question at the end that says, um, because there's no preservation consultants, on the project. It'll be especially important to have um, the Department of Archaeology and Historic Preservation and local preservation review of their materials and methods prior to construction. Yes. Just to make sure. I mean, if they've got Pioneer for the exterior work, then they're, yeah, they're, they're there. I think they're in good shape. But there may be that. a lot more beyond Pioneer scope of work that mm -hmm. could use some preservation. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a great structure in a great spot. Yeah. Having um, spent time in the apartments upstairs, I was glad to hear that they were remodeled. Um, uh, <laughs> I, 
I, I knew somebody that lived up there, but as far as the grant goes, yeah, I thought that they have a very long history of taking care of the facility um, and making sure that it continues to last. That's what I was gonna add too, is that they, they have a long history of investment in the building and really taking care of things on their own and chunking out those projects. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, so so a question. Um, we have to do. If we're going to do any physical activity events at this moment, or is it possible to do it at the end? Do you want to do it now? Let's yeah. let's do both. So remind me at the end. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody wants to kind of look at it all, but let's go. You know, let's let's make those changes now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, do them on the brush. Okay. Can I then increase? Um, can I change my course mm -hmm. for CCHM? Um, under org capacity to 19. Okay. And operations maintenance to uh, 18. Okay, that brings your total to 91. And that brings them up from 90.38 to 90. Yeah. Shakes out. Could I also increase our capacity mm -hmm. to um to eighteen? Okay. We put a caveat on it. The director needs to be up there uh, late. <laughs> 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 so the director has to be out there laying brick. Oh, I'm expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other adjustments? Carrie or Angela? That's good. Awesome. All right. Thank you. We will move on to the Filipino American Community Bainbridge Island and Senate. Uh, they requested $52,000 for a rehabilitation project for the Filipino Community Hall in Winslow. And I had concerns about this project that resulted in the, you know, Midland. Kind of a score. I think I was the lower score on this one. So I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, I felt that the applicant conveyed information about the project well and also shared a strong overall sense of mission and purpose for the facility, but there are no specifics given at all about how history and culture are shared other than by experience in the building. The application would benefit greatly from examples. Um, the types of things they hope to do there, and photos showing how the group works to document and share through experience the preservation of custom cultural traditions. Um, so I really felt it was lacking on detail about their interpretive efforts. Um, their mission statements, you know, pretty clear they want to practice and preserve their customs, culture, and traditions, but how's that done? How is it shared with the larger community? Um, and their response on their interpretive planning, while it seemed promising, really offered no detail. I got the impression that they were planning to work with the Bainbridge Island Historical Society, but I don't think that there was any um, any documentation of that that right. partnership. Right. I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of a two part you know there's the interpretive side but it's also returning or to maintaining the building for its original use too so that, that sort of crosses the for me that does kind of cross the interpretive boundary a little bit did they talk about the origins of the building how long it's been used as a building at all it's a, was it um, for that purpose uh, associated with being an agricultural community is that they don't have a fair hall specific to the cultural baby pretty much as community of Filipino ancestry. Um, 
The hall was also leased to the National Kin Company for use as a receiving station during strawberry season. Property is buried back in shows from the second original condition. So it, it's had a, a number of uses, mm -hmm. which hopefully would all be part of the interpretive plan, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, you know, if their focus is on Filipino culture, how will that be represented within, you know, a structure that doesn't otherwise care? How much does that mean? You have a good point, but I guess I was thinking of it as preserving the building and mm -hmm. and making it um, kind of a center for activities um, that the Filipino community and probably other community groups could use it. Um, and they talk about everything from rummage sales to other there. And while some of that stuff doesn't sound very um, you know historic, so to speak, but it is um, although the rummage might be quite historic. Uh, the, uh, it is a place where people gather and they would gather as community and uh, uh, for a common purpose. And so, you know, I was more persuaded by that aspect of it, I think, than maybe than, than you know, but you're right, it doesn't really say that, you know, anything about the interpretive features. But, yeah, I scored it pretty high as well for the same reason that, um, you know, it's a, it is a significant building. It's in the National Register. It's mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. in, you know, preservation and long-term maintenance of the building itself preserves um, local history. And it clearly is an important gathering place for the Filipino community and, and other community members on Bay Ridge Island in a place to celebrate their culture. So that's, that's sort of, I, I rank this one fairly high. So I scored this one lower in operations and maintenance sustainability, um, just looking at their um, plans going forward um, to you know, walk around with a contractor instead of working on maybe like a, a maintenance plan or, or something of that, of that nature. Yeah, I wrote annual inspection by outside contractor. You're right though, that's, 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 that, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. I think they do have a building committee as well. They talked mm -hmm. about following the Secretary of Interior standards. Yeah. It's a relatively simple building. And I would think that actually, you know, as opposed to some of the other ones we see that really do need a lot more um, expertise. I think a, actually a local contractor in this case would probably mm -hmm. notice pretty clearly that there's something that they need. Yeah, and it's not a future quest. It's it's a, yeah, it's it's a small. Small. I don't I think it's a low risk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grant, but I really wish that they had spent more time and thought on you know the Filipino culture part of the plan and how they want to share that. Yeah. How they're gonna do that. I mean I love that part of it, but I just don't have anything to go on. Um, or so, not enough. Yeah, certainly something you probably could add to you know the recommendation, but I think that for what they're asking for, and um, it'll get done, it'll get done well, building will be preserved, mm -hmm. and they can go to the next step. So I, I, you know, I do support funding the application. Seems like there are places that the application and their work in the future would be stronger. This one where if they apply for another grant in the future for more of the interpretation work, they can take that feedback. Yep. Mm -hmm. It reminds me a lot of the new project. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's a building that it, it could be pretty endangered. So just stabilizing the building is kind of the first step. Step one mm -hmm. and trying to the final. They had some wonderful old pictures that they could even just blow up and have as decorations on the wall that would help connect that history to the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then how does, I just want to pull these questions more out of curiosity and interest. <laughs> um, how does the Filipino culture and their existence on Bainbridge, you know, mesh with that um, early history of the building that's very 
harm or can it but you know, where those histories intertwine? How did it happen? There are a lot of opportunities for yeah, interpretation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not they stabilize the building, then mm -hmm. take the next yeah, step. Yeah, yeah. I hope they yeah. come back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The next step. Right. Okay. Any adjustments to scores from the Filipino American community being the judge? I think it should be funded for sure, but I'll probably lower my operations and um, maintenance to 15. Okay. Any other before we move on? Okay, our next is the speaker of Virginia. I want to know if this boat is ever going to get finished. This is supposed to return its operational use. <laughs> I think in all the years I've been at this panel, has there ever been a cycle that the Virginia it has not been the problem. It's a hole, <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's a hole in the which you pour wine. All right, they've requested 745000 dollars uh, to remove and replace the starboard guard to assess and repair adjacent fungus infested structures. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to pick on somebody. How about Sadie? Do you want to speak to quiet? <laughs> I just uh, similar to what John was saying. You know, it's it's a question. I scored it. You know, kind of mid range. Um, questioning the you know the nature of a boat, <laughs> the historic vessel. Um, but you know, they have a demonstrated history. Um, continuously of successful grant applications, successfully maintaining um, and completing the different phases that they have done in the past, continuing through um, the project purpose, I questioned, you know, because trying to find dry, dry rot, suspected dry rot in one area, uh, but I do know the importance of getting dry rot out once, mm -hmm. once it is found, um, but um, you know, I, I did do what I could, and, um, you know, rank it accordingly. So, um, yeah, I, I, this one was a tough one for me. Yeah. Both the historic boats and gators are not. Now we know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't have a lot of boats. That <laughs> well, I think they did make a real point about talking about the uh, uh, survivor of the of the of the fleet of what yeah. which it is. Yeah. In fact, they do do uh, uh, programs up with it, and uh, you know, I certainly I've been on it, um, and uh, they've been working on this for a long time. <laughs> it is a wooden boat; it's going to continue to need work. I mean, they're, they, uh, but. I couldn't really see any reason not to. They they have a track record. They're successful at doing it. Um, they know what they're doing, uh, and I certainly would have no idea how to touch our wooden boat. Um, uh, and and they, you know, they'll keep it moving. I mean, they they're committed to this this boat. So I, I think it should be funded, but. Yeah. It's just the same. It is kind of, you know, it's a wooden boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's frustrating yeah. that there isn't some kind of, you know, penetrating radar that they can, can find that good rock. But having to do demolition yeah. of perfectly good historic material mm. just to check. Mm -hmm. I mean, that to me is, is really frustrating, mm -hmm. um, especially at this expense. Yeah, no, that was exactly that. Expected. Hugely yeah. expensive. Yeah. But I did yeah. say they definitely have really solid fundraising mm -hmm. prowess oh, and success. Yeah. And, you know, in grants and private contributions, there are a lot of people that support the organization. Mm -hmm. um, I also 
really appreciate that they're really, they have this maritime youth internship program where they're mm -hmm. trying to get young people engaged in maritime history and heritage. Um, the one thing that I, so I, you know, I ranked it fairly high, but there was absolutely no mention of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, and you know, I always note if that's missing because I think it's really important, especially if they're trying to, you know, reach a broader audience. They, they, that's something that I would hope they would focus on yeah. a little bit. Good comment. Anyone else want to comment on this? The other question I had was, it is a city of Seattle landmark. Um, and I think they said no to local, that there would not be any local review. So just, you know, to note that they should definitely check in. It may be because this, these are in-kind repairs. They don't need review, but, mm -hmm. you know, just to note, they, they probably know this, but to check in with the city staff sure that they don't need any kind of review by the landmarks board. I had a question about the access to the home port on Lake Union. I know that they had they established control of the ship itself, but I was a little confused on the, the mooring um, access. Anybody know? I don't remember that. I thought they had worked that out. I know that's been a problem way back. Just one of those things that's like, mm -hmm. you know, if it's not said explicitly, it might just be obvious to someone else. I know I've been on a lot of historic vessels in the state and I've never been on a ship in the house. <laughs> so maybe it's just me having no access. <clears throat> she was out all weekend mm -hmm. the Basham Circumnavigation is awesome. Jay, is this the vessel we were on with YHP? So we took the youth program when I was at the Washington Trust out in the middle of Lake Washington and the um, boiler was the boiler cut out. Oh, no. <laughs> it stopped. So we were they were just about to get like a tug out. Yeah. To pull. It was actually a beautiful evening, it remember? But we were out there for a really long time. Oh, okay. With how many floating. like 25 high like school kids. students to make that to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 ice cream, remember? Ice cream. <laughs> In other words, we should ask them to replace the boiler. <laughs> the so, yeah. Yeah. Check the boiler. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone want to adjust their scores? Our next applicant is the city of Auburn um, for the Auburn Historic Post Office. Um, they are doing phase two of an arts and culture center full renovation of the 1937 building, just under Mary Baxter. Um, Terry or Angela? I, uh, sorry, I had. Uh, that uh, it was a very solid application um, support. Um, let's see, uh, for obviously um, the support of the city um, and all of uh, their, uh, what go, comes along with them as far as the, their expertise in uh, the, the restoration. Um, and let's see. They're, they are do, still, it seemed like they were still doing uh, community outreach to figure out what to do with the facility. Is that, uh, um, mm -hmm. but uh, offering um, uh, meeting spaces for heritage organizations such as uh, genealogical and uh, historical societies um, was important to me. So the outcome. <laughs> I'll jump in because this is um, a project that the, the Auburn Landmarks Commission reviews and staff them. And, you know, I, I think that their phase one project was really successfully planned, completed on time. They, um, they're very organized, um, you know, great 
support from the city of Auburn and elected officials. The, I think it's well planned and um, I think it's great that they're converting this building to a community use for arts and culture and, um, and that they're consulting with the White River Valley Museum on building management and interpretation. So um, I scored this one quite high and I'm really excited to, that they, they, they took it over and are really doing something with this really important new building. Yeah, I think the only place I marked them down a little bit was on their project purpose. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. In meaning, like, how are they, how do they plan to use the building? Like, mm -hmm. their programming intention with it was a little weak. Like, it all started with, like, oh, we think we're going to do this, mm -hmm. but like, to be a little more firm about that. But their intentions are strong, and they have a partnership with the White River Museum, which also gives them confidence that they will move um, in the right direction. I actually didn't yeah. see as much evidence of the partnership outside of just the letter of support. It was kind of like a willingness to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It felt a little bit. It, it looks like there's been a there's been a uh, yeah, like everything else, there's been a delay in yeah. this the project mm -hmm. getting um, to this point. Um, so yeah, purpose purpose is a little low for me. I just saw this as being much more of a strict historic preservation project um, mm -hmm. without much um, you know the interpretive value will be spelled out in this space. Yeah, I, the purpose was the place that I marked it down to, but probably maybe segue a little bit from what the others have said is that um, it seemed like really the purpose is less for historic interpretation than it is for as an art center. And, um, and look at the renderings and whatnot that are of the inside. It's, it's really, it's hard to restore. I mean, you couldn't really restore the inside. It's been pretty well decimated by the, Used for other purposes, the medical clinic and whatnot. So, um, you know, the historic interpretation is really the exterior and then probably some panels and whatnot they're talking about. But otherwise, it looked like the programming, at least I read the programming, was going to be a lot more geared not toward history as much as it is for just community art center, which is, which is great. I mean, I'm not opposed to doing that. It's just that, um, you know, if we're going to talk about it being a historic building um, history, I, that was the only reason I. All the others I think are fine. It's all well planned. It's going to be great. It's good for the community and all this kind of stuff. It's not just really um, not purposes of history so much as it is for community arts. Now, considering this is the Heritage mm -hmm. Capital yeah, Projects grant, and this yeah. is at the top end of um, some of the asks, it, it felt like it could be a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anyone want to adjust their scores? Um, I would like to take project planning down to uh, 17 <coughs> and project purpose down to 15. Okay. I'd like to take project planning down to 17 as well. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Do we want to take a break? I think so. Maybe five minutes? Oh, that would be great. Yeah. It's 11 03. Let's be back by 11 10. We are at Okanagan County Historical Society Incorporated. Um, great book. So we are in Winthrop. Uh, they have requested sixty-two thousand dollars to evaluate and preserve evaluation and preservation treatments for the Guy Wearing Log Cabin. It's a homesteader cabin, house building, and schoolhouse log cabin. Um, let's see. Terry, you want to speak to this one? Um, sure, I can do that. Um, let's see, I wrote that it was a uh, minor um, work on the historic structure, um, good volunteer organization, and a uh, portion is funded by the community. Mm -hmm. um, they are look, will be looking at expanding um, and uh, 
the interpretation. Um, and they have introduced more traditional uh, historic preservation techniques to the museum and its buildings. Uh, experienced staff to oversee and perform some of the work. And uh, that was kind of my notes. Okay. Are there any places you marked them down that you want to offer uh, constructive criticism on? I, I'm not sure. I did mark them down on um, the community value um, and um, realizing that they had some community funds and that their organization, a volunteer organization was large. Um, I wasn't, I can't, I, without going back and looking, I, th those are the only comments I had, but I did mark them down a little bit for community value. Okay. Anybody else? Um, let's take it out, please. Um, that was actually one of the areas I really, I really love. This is one of my favorite projects. I'll just put that out there. Um, <laughs> I, I love that they were using this, um, you know, not just as a, as a preservation project, but this was intended as a training project for their volunteers so that they could learn appropriate techniques in historic preservation of log cabins. And that really, um, that really uh, kind of boosted their, their, um, and the town, well, it's, they talk about town's historical legacy of neighborliness, helping out and hardiness in a remote place. And I thought it was just neat to be able to train people in that place who probably are also caring for other historic structures in the area so they want to be able to uh, work with them that skill set. Yep. That's what I was going to comment too, was I like that workshop approach mm -hmm. for everyone. I think it's, there's a couple, a couple of applications that, that Incorporated this. I think the Washington Trust to some extent did and um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John. Um, I was just going to comment that the um, this is a real grassroots organization. Mm -hmm. they've, they've been able to find uh, somebody who has some real skills um, and this the museum and, and the, the whole uh, place there is really important to that small community. Um, my concern only is is really again it's the leap of faith part, which is that um, they can manage to keep this going, and um, that if they are doing the training and whatnot, that they will have the expertise and the, the will to keep it keep it running over a long period of time, um, because it is a it is a building. It's kind of like, in a way it's a little bit like a wooden boat. <laughs> I mean, it's not a boat. <laughs> Um, you know, it's going to need constant upkeep and maintenance. And so um, hopefully the workshop aspect and whatnot will keep that, keep that running. And I would also hope that in their interpretation that they are able to keep as much of the historic character of it as possible while still making it usable for the, uh, for the museum purposes. Mm -hmm. But it's a small amount and mm -hmm. definitely well worth and important to them. I love this project too. Um, and part of it was just what Craig was saying, how they have this sort of community ethic that's part of their it's part of their mission, kind yeah. of culture. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. And they have taken that and said, this is who we are. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're using the museum to then express. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, part of that is uh, part of that culture is embracing newcomers. And they are intentionally bringing newcomers into this volunteer. Force, so they have they, it becomes self perpetuating. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're welcoming new people through the, the, the care of the old, and then they become invested. In I feel like the brilliant the dedication of this core of volunteers just came through mm -hmm. in every aspect mm -hmm. of the application, and that they they really I I was impressed by their fundraising for this project. You know, they don't have all of it in hand, but they I think again just a great organization and. I'm excited about this one. He was friends with Teddy Roosevelt. I missed that. <laughs> Imagine him here. Okay. Does anyone want to add anything to the discussion or alter their scores? Just a quick minute. Oh, 
Okay, let's move on to the city of Mercer Island. <clears throat> Mercer Island has requested $613,000 for envelope and seismic improvements to the boiler building at Luther Burbank Park. <clears throat> and I'll open it up to anybody wants to jump in. Can you double check that number? Yeah. Is it, I think it was 513. 513. And that's, five, yeah. that's a typo on the slide. Okay, oh, typo on the slide. It's yeah. $513,000. 513,000. Mm -hmm. The project would replace the roof membrane and small seismic retrofit to lower the chimney by 10 feet to stabilize the building. It would also develop an interpretive system that connects the structure to other historic elements in the park. Well, I'll jump in because I was critical of this project. Um, there's been extensive planning work done with multiple studies going back to 2006, but no historic structure report. Yet the alteration that they're planning um, is significant. It changes uh, what I would consider a character defining feature of the building in a way that is not, it, it's completely irreversible. And it's literally, as far as I can tell from the photos, that top 10 feet carries the only decorative element in the entire building and they're gonna chop it off. <laughs> um, so I really uh, have concerns about their approach to this work. Um, I, I can't, from my position and the information that I have, offer any thoughts on what a better approach might be, but I don't know that they have really looked hard at options to, to this approach, I feel like. And I went over this a couple of times, thinking, there must be some, something here. There must have been options that were offered, but I, don't, I feel like the architectural team came in and said, this is what you should do, and they said, okay, that's what we'll do. And they didn't ask them to go back and you know try something that didn't have such a distinctive impact on the building. And the reasoning was a safety issue or proposal? Yeah. Yeah, size and safety. Yeah. So the structural engineer recommended reinforcing the chimney interior combined with removing the top of the feet of the chimney. So that's gotta be a cost issue, right? To to propose to remove the top if so that you, you could stabilize probably anything. That's right. what I was saying. Well, I, got, I think I got kind of sucked in on the, I know they did the, yeah. they did a lot of planning mm -hmm. I mean, for the whole mm -hmm. complex. Yeah. And I know I, I have in my notes that a boiler building study was completed, but it wasn't a historic structure report, as you say, Mary mm -hmm. Grace, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you raise a really good point about um, the importance of that feature. I mean, that that is a definitely a character defining feature. So when I hear my notes, which I have to rely on because it was a while ago, the cultural resources report attached with the application reinforces the historic value of the site. Though the area of potential effect for that cultural resources project um, did not include this structure. Mm -hmm. um, so what's up with that? <laughs> um, why isn't the building listed or planned for listing? Um, and the fact that they didn't even mention the decorative detailing that would be lost with the removal of the top 10 feet of the chimney. Um, was consideration given to retaining this detail or some portion of it? Um, I went deep, I went into the meeting notes attached to the boiler building study dated November 2016. And um, quote, Boiler building is not a landmark structure. There is no landmark review requirement for COMI. Thank you. <laughs> and no desire or need to designate the structure as a landmark, unquote. So the lack of desire to register the building to me is concerning. They're not treating it like a historic building. They're just going to lop off that top and move on. 
the city of Mercer Island, I believe, has their own preservation ordinance, but I don't there I don't know how active that is. So you know, I don't I don't know if they have a design review board in place or a any sort of internal preservation review. So that's my other comment. Mm -hmm. They have ex excellent organizational support and a strong set of consultants, including Swenson Say, who are fabulous on seismic, and Cardinal. Mm -hmm. But who's making preservation related decisions and how are those decisions being made? I mean, what values basis, what treatment approach has been selected? That, that line of thinking and decision making should be guided by a historic structure report. And they have it. Of all the studies they've done, mm -hmm. they haven't done that yeah. because they're deciding not to consider it historic. Mm -hmm. Good point. It's, it's kind of like they're it's avoiding like, landmarks so they can just yeah. get this done. I miss it too. I didn't feel yeah. right to me. I actually scored them relatively high on the public benefit related to the programming and the use of oh, the site okay. by the Great. community oh, and, good right. stuff. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the capacity of the city. Mm -hmm. But you're, you bring up a really important point. I just don't think they're doing justice to this mm -hmm. building. Yeah. I feel very mixed about that. Um, I love the project's purpose and intention. Um, I, I even answered the question, yes, do you support funding? But I really, I'm not sure I do mm -hmm. um, because of the historic preservation. It's not preservation to me. Exactly. <laughs> it's adaptive reuse. Um, I miss that completely. I mean, there, yeah, yeah. I was I was kind of <laughs> I was blown away by the by the or I was taken by the um, the interpretive plan and that it was fitting into the whole uh, structure, I, I but but I missed that piece entirely. Well, You're absolutely and, right. And I think to give ourselves yeah. a break, it's because a lot of the applications didn't have a rel well developed interpretive. Piece. You know that that to me was the piece yeah. that you just wanted there to be more an interpretation right. you kind of cut him some slack on that but this one had it so yeah. Yeah. well so, i you know yeah. i wasn't impressed by the interpreter but i thought it was just sort of a tack on oh yeah it's the heritage capital grant so we'll add this interpreter oh, I, 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 I <laughs> um so here's here's what i suggested at the end and maybe i um require that the property and we can't do continues but um the property should be listed on the state or national or local register right um, they should explore alternatives to retain and secure the smokestack top or consider strategies to treat its removal with much greater sensitivity. Require that history field standards and best practices be selected and applied to the interpretive project plan and execution. That they didn't talk about in standard set. Requiring an ongoing, a quick, um, they should have an ongoing commitment of resources and public engagement to support their stated plans um for expansion of the site's interpretation um and the panel should consider funding the interpretive work only we don't know if we can't, <coughs> we can't, we can't really do that okay. well, work is not eligible um unless it's permanent exterior signage essentially which it sounds like they're making some yeah, of that in um this is what like you give it to an interpretation. I think there was minor um, physical interpretation proposed, um, but it, it leaned pretty heavily on the mobile app uh, that, yeah. that, that mm -hmm. uh, they were using for other other interpreter purposes. That was the ineligible. So, so this is probably a, bit a difficult question to answer, but are there other projects that this grant has funded that are landmark eligible properties that then were not? That's not the intent. I can't think so, of anything right. off, the head, off my head. I mean, typically that's what this panel is for, is mm -hmm. to identify that. I don't, I can't think of anything that's come up. Because I know that we do weight pretty heavily on the historic preservation side, and mm -hmm. you know, if, if there were projects in the future that were weighted heavily on interpretation, would that potentially lock down the stuff? What did the HP say? So they did upload a letter from Gap that said that there was an in house on the national register. On the national register. That's not eligible still... for national register. That's correct. That they could just locally. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm pained by it. <laughs> I'm really yeah. pained by the idea of taking the only, what is the main character defining feature of the building? Yeah. 
I mean, it's a significant portion of that's bad. Right. It is a yeah. yeah. portion yeah. of that stuff. And it really looks yeah. yeah. I'll give you I'd lower my project planning score to um, 12. Okay. Yeah, I'll do the same, David. Okay. Same amount? Yeah, I'll lower it to 15. Okay. And I'll lower my project purpose also to 15. Okay. I'll go back. Yeah, I'll lower my purpose to 15 also. And I'll do that as well. And so, say to you. I'll add that. Oh, is it to both of them? Okay. Mm -hmm. Project planning to 15. Project planning. Okay. I like to take down project planning to 15 as well. Oh, I think Angela. Oh, yep. I'm going um, project planning to 15. Okay. It's a busy one, David. Yeah. <laughs> They're all the same, though. That's good. <laughs> On the yes no question, are you are those adjustable? I, I mean, no, no. we've noted those, but I, I think ultimately it's a collective yeah. 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 so yeah. spectrum question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where does that place this project in the overall space? I know we're still a long way from. Mm -hmm. Moves them into wait a second. The rest of them. Yeah, there's a long way to go. There's some hotels in that one. Um, Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess that's I've said plenty. Um, I'm definitely not saying this project. Unfortunately, I mean, I love the purpose. Love the purpose. Thank you for bringing all that yeah. up. That yeah. I see. I really yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. It's safety and it's you know a great public program, but they're not doing justice. To the okay. Next is Friends of Lake Pole Garden. So the current contract 2313 is the beginning. Um, that's why it says finish the carriage house and ground restoration. The current contract is to add to the carriage house. I was really confused about the purpose of this, of the work being proposed, and, and which parts were being requested for funding. Um, there's like such a big package yeah. overall. Um, it was really difficult to pick out what was actually being proposed for HCP. Some of the language I, I felt um, reiterated the direness of the last project in terms of you know this building is mm -hmm. in danger without this you know um, this work, but I didn't see that from what was being proposed this this round. I, yeah, I think I wrote like these notes of like okay, this is what I think is in here: mm -hmm. interior tenant improvement, ADA bathrooms, finish <laughs> the second story for educational studio and multi-purpose workspace, interpretive <laughs> exhibits. Offices and then the goat house, <coughs> residence. Is that 
sound like what is in this one? From the narrative, yeah. but not from the budget necessarily. Yeah. I felt that there was a good narrative in the budget. I don't know. I thought it, you know, they're just continuing what they had done in the uh, in this in the current one and uh, finishing up. I the my problem with this has been, you know, they're, they're I wish the original building were still there. <laughs> you wish they could show. Them? I wish the original building had still been there. It's oh, been there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's kind of recreating something that unfortunately is gone and mm -hmm. it can be done well yeah <laughs> that's true yeah. <laughs> um my markdowns for them were around um, just a lack of data on public access and engagement um i, I dug in a little bit on into their admission fees to just try to get an understanding of who comes and who pays and how many people and that kind of thing and i, I didn't uh find much um i visited the website <laughs> to see and i found that admission is set very low in scale which is great in fact enhances public access um and their in their income based on admission is really really low but that doesn't tell me really whether it's because they just didn't have any visitors or whether they're letting people in with you know, next to no admission fee. Um, so, so I find myself digging for information that wasn't in the application that I wanted. I, I wondered if there was like a, a leadership transition or something that we're not seeing, you know, within the, the period between the two projects. It just I mean, they demonstrated such good ability to fundraise significant amounts in the past, and even just overall communication seemed really off. One of the things when? that I noticed was missing on a lot of applications, and it was definitely missing here, was. Um, uh, information about and affiliation with the board members, mm -hmm. the people with list names, yeah, and that would be no good at all. I want to know who they are, what do they do, what's their experience, why are they on the board? Yeah. And um, and a step further, maybe for another year to um, promote diversity, equity, and inclusion would be some kind of a um, understanding of their representation of the community. Um, I, which is in, isn't applicable here right now, but just for maybe our debrief later. I think it was a little bit of community value because they noted that the garden is only open part time, and I know you know it's hard to keep, but it, it, I didn't have a sense of really how how open is it, how you know how what's visitation like, and then I noted that the organization seems to be kind of new to interpretation. Like I don't have a sense that they really have a handle on that piece of it. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. well, I don't know. I was I was more, I mean, there is part of this proposal is to create a, a uh, an education area. Mm -hmm. And it looks to me like a lot of their visitation or what they're basing this on is is the group visit, the school group and the, yeah. Yeah. the community rather than just the off the wall. I mean, off the wall, that's the occasional yeah. tourist. I mean, uh, you know, casual visitor. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, in that sense, I thought that, that was a positive, really positive thing because they haven't had that. Uh, um, they're hoping to improve that mm -hmm. and, and therefore make the gardens much more than, say, pretty place. Mm -hmm. Was this was presented as a final phase? Is that is that what are the others read out of this? Mm -hmm. Campaign phase four. Oh. Yeah. I just wondered, you know, where where are the interpretive elements, uh, like the, the physical ones that had been proposed, like where do those fall within the scope of this? Are they going to be finished in this phase? Do they follow later, um, or are they considered separate from the project somehow? I just I was really just again really confused about them. What was included in here? We have interpretive planning. It's guided by the question, what do we want? Part to our big guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it does say the carriage house continued rehabilitation represents the final phase of a capital campaign that began in 2014 um, under their readiness to initiate a new physical plan, cost effective project. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just 
this book with this how this yeah. has been it. Yeah. yeah. Sure, will be built into a rehabilitated carriage house with those great. There's an opportunity to utilize one building for multiple complementary purposes. Part of it is administrative admissions and that kind of thing. But then they get the education studio. That's really the part that's the. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you do have to read it through a couple of times to right. read it all together. But I it's do think that of, most of the HCP funds are really about creating these educational spaces mm -hmm. and then yeah. interpret I did it. I ended up scoring it very high, really, on all things put together. But my uh, where I marked them down a little bit was the community value because it really was kind of having to reach to gather that together and um, organizational capacity. Because I, there was no information about the schools affiliation with board members. Um, there were signs with strong board, including um, uh, through donations. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would, you know, I scored it well too, because I think that they are, it would make them move. The whole purpose behind it to me was that, or the way I read it, was that it was going to make them move into a much more intuitive um, focus or education focus on their organization as opposed to just horticulture and taking care of plants um, and, and the gardens, but actually um, doing more, again, along the education interpretation line. Uh, so, I think it's worthy of doing. I mean, I think yeah. it, it would move them. It would be a move for them okay, to in the right direction, or at least what I would consider the right direction. And it's a logical, yeah. you know, next phase mm -hmm. of work that continues, you know, building on a good thing. Mm -hmm. And clearly, believers have the benefit. Yep. Yeah. Also, made a note that this is a great experience now with HCP and it's a great team to put these things together. It's going to be right next building, preserve the character of the sale. I'm actually going to exalt them up to my score. So I didn't rank them badly, I was just kind of in the middle ground. Yeah. Um, and this would definitely increase their access capacity. So, can I give them 18 for project plan? Any other adjustments? No team. Okay. Uh, the Cutter Theater is next. In Meadowline Falls. They've asked for a whopping $19,000 <laughs> for flooring replacement and cellar areas. And should I take on? Brenda, <laughs> do you want to talk about this a little bit? Let me pull it up here. I mean, one, this was this is a cool building just from the perspective of being a, a cutter um, designed uh, structure oh, and it yeah. being, I think it was three out of uh, six um, that were exist or existing uh, now at uh, school properties. So buildings that Very were cool. intended to be school. Mm -hmm. So I think it had a really um, a neat value from that perspective. And this just seemed like such a straightforward, simple rehabilitation project uh, just to maintain access to a historic structure for a community. Um, it's going to continue to function as a civic center um, since its school days. Hosting community events. It just really seems like a very core um, aspect of the community center. But I didn't have anything that was really Really exceptional, but I didn't have any real problems with it either. So it was just kind of a happy medium. Okay. Anybody else want to offer? Yeah, I, I agree. I just I noted that it this this building really serves an important um, accessible community gathering place for the arts, humanities, and history. Um, 
it's a big building for this organization to manage and maintain and i'm impressed with you know their organizational capacity to to do it it's not a large ask um i did have one question and that is whether they consider costing out replacing the this vinyl tile if they would look at replacing it with real wood flooring or at least a dirt like a durable laminated wood product that you know it, it's a small thing but there's you know there's one section of it that they're putting they're putting vinyl and it's like it would be really cool because there's wood elsewhere mm. they, would, they could consider you know it could be a budget issue but i made a comment about that too you did. That would be, and that's you know i realized that you know you have to be realistic yes. but i would love to have seen wood back so there's a preservation yeah, but, question yeah. okay. if you're replacing non-historic material with non-historic material it's basically is it better to do something like that sort of looks like the historic material or make a clear departure this is one we struggle with a lot right well this is similar to simpson's uh roofing choice i mean there was a precedent set for two different uh, yes. materials mm -hmm. and i think this one's very similar to that yeah, it also choose. gives them the opportunity to uh rehabilitate the historic floors underneath at a future mm -hmm. date yeah that's true yeah you do preserve them i'm fine with it I it's fine yeah. no, it's I, think it's I, that. I'm fine. I caught that but i didn't catch this so there's an important yeah. thing that you said though about the ability mm -hmm. to take this non-historic material off at some point in the future mm -hmm. if they choose to, to. so they need yeah. to be thoughtful about the type of pieces that they yes use. yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. that's something so we should convey to them so that they're, they're sure it's a reversible yeah. Yeah. whichever yeah. they choose yeah that's a good point some of those adhesives are just impossible. Impossible. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any, yeah, any adjustments to your scores? Okay. Everybody good? All right. Mm -hmm. Folsom Park and Museum. This works. Give me a second to pull it up. <laughs> Susan? Yeah, I was going to say, like, my, my, I ranked them a little harsher than. Yeah, um, so tell us, tell us um, what you were thinking. My notes. Uh, I said community values would be improved with broader interpretation goals. Um, not the technical term. We didn't have anything about DEI. Oh, I see. Yeah. We're in colloquial. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. I think it's a very railroad focus. Mm -hmm. There's just opportunities for improving interpretation. So I think where I rank them low. I ranked them um, kind of mid range on project purpose. I wasn't quite clear exactly why mm -hmm. on that. And then also community values and operation sustainability. I'm with you on the, the project purpose, but I, I kept their score high because they had a very strong emphasis on programming for schools, mm -hmm. which I think in this community is really important. I don't want to get too strongly in that way, but I felt like it's really important to this community. I would speak very strongly in support of this because I, I know a little bit about this organization and uh, uh, they have really come a long, long way from where they were 20 years ago, I guess. Um, Partly because of I think John, um, I was the director there. Uh, he's kind of a, a, a renaissance guy in the sense he can do, you know, he can fix your engine as well as <laughs> talk about Shakespeare. Um, but uh, uh, but he has really made that place a part of that community, and um, uh, and himself 
a part of the community. Mm -hmm. And I think the development of that property um, from just the house and a, and a wedding event center, which is, they have done a lot with in the beginning to into a really functioning place with the, um, <clears throat> with the railroad and, and um, the fact of tying into the logging industry and whatnot has been um, uh, really important. And the fact that this is just another step in that whole process, because none of that existed 20 years ago and they, they slowly built this better and better and better. Mm -hmm. um, would be really money well spent and uh, and make it really work the way it should or continue to work. Yeah, I scored this one fairly high as well. And even though I don't know the ED like John does, I put strong leadership. It seemed like that came through. Strong ED leadership, solid track record of planning and completing projects. And I also I scored it pretty high on on purpose um you know this project contrib contributes to the campus's you know history interpretation educational programming and i like that they noted it does promote heritage tourism and that's probably mm -hmm. really important in this area mm -hmm. so it's I, really visible I, that you know, it's just, right on the yeah, road yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just, yeah. you can't drive through without yeah. seeing it. i think you can just help them you know continue to move ahead with their plan it's a good thing I think that's what sets us apart as you know a railroad project is this this railroad stamp is being a really it's a full scale exhibition and it is visible from the road you know it's just this really great highway 101 like tourist destination um, and just you know I mean I know that the new shed is is maybe maybe sort of a lackluster you know purpose but it frees up uh, the locomotive shop so it, it kind of has this the snowball effect and that they're able to restore their flat car and uh, you know do a lot of other work um, with this addition this this seemed like actually a really well planned project it's this this building is an amazing counterpoint to everything that's going on across the street yes <laughs> Um, any score adjustments or further conversation? I, I will defer to the colleagues who have more experience on this panel. I will increase um, the scores. I think this was a great discussion. Um, can I do project planning to 17? Mm -hmm. uh, organizational capacity, 17. And uh, project purpose to 18. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? San Juan Preservation Trust is next. Improvements to facilities at the Farrell Homestead. The hell is preserved. Mm -hmm. uh, improvements in the 1883 log house exhibition interpretive space, $160,000. Well, I'll start. Great. And I actually gave it a relatively low score for project planning. Um, I noted that the estate was donated to this organization in 2018, but there, it, there's no HSR or preservation plan to guide the projects that I saw. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't see bids for, there, there was some, there was like one, there were some bids, but they didn't seem super complete. Um, and I didn't, they, under organizational capacity, I felt that they they kind of gave an uncompelling explanation for why they didn't include organizational documents instead of just including them or not you know i yeah i really obviously think it's it's an important building i'm just question sort of readiness on this one it's you know definitely you know this log structure is worthy of restoration that upgrade upgrades but i just noted that the application lacked clarity um 
And again, that the lack of management and planning documents. Mm -hmm. And that it, it, you know, this one could be a challenge for grant administration. It just seemed a little unclear to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if the wraparound porch is included in the scope. There were just a lot of questions for me on this. Yeah, one. they're actually talking about replacing the porch. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and you don't know how much of it was historic. They do say that they will follow the Secretary of Interior mm -hmm. standards, but if they don't have anybody holding that job, you know, a consultant or it's San Juan Preservation Trust, right? Who's doing the work? Who's doing the work. I think they know that they'll, they'll bring on a historic preservation consultant, but they, they haven't really identified that person mm -hmm. yet. Our intention is to do so in compliance with best practices. Burn the Secretary of as follows. Potentially it's short charge at all. Compatibility. Possible. that necessary. Slicing. I mean, they've got, they're saying all the right things. So I agree that they don't have an HSR and that would be good. But this is only $160,000. Yeah. yeah, I said I would fund it. I did. Yeah, I just, yeah. I just sort of I kind of <laughs> explained like, to fund it out. <laughs> no, no, I just, I just I was, wanted to explain sort of yeah. my rationale for scoring it a little yeah. bit lower in some of these categories, mm -hmm. which is felt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I gave it a high score for project purpose. I think it's, a, it's important work and, and important to the community. Yeah. Is there a discrepancy in the amount on the slide and the requested amount on our sheet? I've got 268. Oh, My only um, concern was uh, about the. Um, that might be no, the grant funds are. It's one sixty. Okay, that might 50, be one fifty five. Problem on the spreadsheet. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Grant funds requested are one hundred and sixty. One hundred and sixty, rather than two hundred and sixty eight, is what we're saying. Yeah. So were there any um what were are, were there some specific concerns about the entry and porch um kind of looking at the historic preservation aspect of that uh, replacement? See, they're not giving you that much detail. Okay. They're just saying, yeah, we need to address the porch. Um maybe this one. And they do have a lot of detail in the um, elements of work section. Yeah, I thought that the, the work proposed, I mean, it, it looked to me like they were doing the structural work. Uh, my concerns would have to be with, you know, how it's going to be used afterwards. And I think also, more importantly, sustainability. Um, you know, I didn't really see. Um, Where's the revenue? Did it have to keep it and be taken? Now, maybe I may have missed it entirely, but, um, and, you know, truthfully, I think a lot of these projects like this, it was, uh, people, they'll, they'll figure it out. I mean, they'll get it done. They're not going to let it go down, but it's not really documented very well, at least what I saw, but mm -hmm. I may have missed it entirely. So. Are, are we looking at the right property here? I don't, I don't recognize this as being. It's one of the structures. Is it one of the one structures? Of it's the water tower. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, so so it's kind of there's useful. what four or five on that parcel. It's a really amazing. <laughs> it's it's a a great size. <laughs> the fact that they kind of got it is a. So they're going to add a porch to protect the north wall from weather, provide a safer and more welcoming public entry, and have dry space to view the Bell Road. A small covered porch will be added 
made of the same materials and in the same style as the main building. We're working on getting a rendering from the Yeah, that's the thing there. The documentation kind of wasn't there for me. Right. I didn't, mm -hmm. that. I right. didn't understand all of it. They explained it, but. Mm -hmm. And there was, yeah, they don't have a rendering yet, so that wouldn't have been an attachment for this period. So this is like an entry improvement. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Susan? Oh, now that I'm looking at this again, like the axe seems a little low. Do you fight work and foundation work and all storage? Your fight work and all these things. Let's comment about that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, so in their original proposal, they had actually requested quite a bit more. Um, and that might be part of the problem with the number on the sheet. Um, but I realized after they had submitted their applications that um, for a new project over 100,000, only half the match can be in kind. And so we had to reduce mm -hmm. the grant request um, to make the match work. So, um, so the project is quite a bit larger than per, per, the, the grant request because of that. So if there are particular pieces that the panel would like them to focus on this, the funding that's mm -hmm. available, let me know and we can know that. But they did not reduce the scope when the grant request was. It was um, it was after they had submitted it that I realized the discrepancy. Yeah. And so we don't really give them the opportunity to, 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 to edit it. Right. So it was, it was, yeah, it was a sort of an administrative mm -hmm. bug that I caught. Um, so yeah, the scope was not reduced. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, it seems to me like an appropriate place for church capital funding would be under the foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I was that site too. drainage yeah. foundation mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Stabilizing I from like the foundations down and out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe gutters and downspouts. Yeah. Spots. I was kind of thinking the top of the bottom. Yes, yeah, top of the bottom. Make sure that the water comes, follows, gets off the building yeah. out of the way. And maybe yeah. they can pull out that covered porch piece that we don't really, we don't, we don't understand it. We don't know how that's going to impact it. Feels too early. early. Yeah. I'm not sure it's going to be. You know, and not that it, not that they couldn't come back and request funding for that with more information, but I just want. Um, they also do note. I'm trying to find it again. That they will um, use a preservation consultant to mm -hmm. work the foundation to make sure you know, they've got the right type of water. And, you know. So they work with falling on water. Yeah, there you go. Um, Stone Foundation. We plan to have a historic preservation consultant prior to any work on the foundation to determine the best water type. It's more than just the best mortar type, but if they have a, a preservation consultant. The last thing I'll say about this one is that um, they talk about wanting to tell the complete story of the site, but then they say they hope for tribal participation in that. And to me, a hope is not a plan for having tribal participation. <laughs> so I think it's really important if they want to tell the full story that they engage the, um, the tribal community in that effort. I saw that come up in so many of these projects. Mm -hmm. Just the, you know, the yeah, hope, yeah. hope, yeah. hope for yeah. partnerships. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's quite the news. To get it off the ground. Yeah, yeah. 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 To get it. <laughs> yeah. I, I did want to change my project planning to 18 on this one. If I could. Yeah. So is there is there some desire to amend uh, the scope that would be supported? Is that, is that an option? Um, I think you can let us know, know what elements you would like in the scope of work. Um, obviously, if they wanted, they had other funds, they could go beyond that, they could, but um, right. you can I'll work to narrow that scope in the contracting phase. So it sounds like I'm hearing water management and foundation. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Yeah. 
think that makes sense. Yeah. Would there be space to pay for an assessment of that addition? But the, the, the preservation consultants yeah. to also review their plans for the addition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are at noon. Are we also halfway? I think we're almost exactly halfway. Okay, let's do one more. <laughs> it's over more than halfway. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. To bring um, it longer at the end. Yeah, we have more to yeah. talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the next one is the Northwest Maritime Center. Um, I could jump in on this one. Hmm. I was um, not convinced that this is the right funding source for that, but somewhat wayfinding um, modern building. I, I didn't see the historic preservation value, I didn't want to really go about the heritage. Um, all from maritime and heritage, but is this the right? Place to do that, and um, this is where they do it. So, um, I'm not to do that, but about project purpose. So, I'm open to, open to ideas and discussion. I actually really love this project for some of those reasons. Um, if I could share a couple of those. Um, I thought the wayfinding and the heritage interpretation um, was tied to this being uh, value for um, site visitors who weren't necessarily coming uh, for their programming, and um, just to uh, improve public understanding of the heritage for the space. And that this was also one of the kind of pilot properties within the Maritime Washington National Heritage Area. I felt they had a really strong um, kind of basis um, under their project, uh, you know, within the scope of that heritage area that there'd already been uh, so much interpretive. Uh, Work done mm -hmm. uh, to for the entire space, um, not not just their property, but uh, the, the whole region. Uh, Where they are, they're right next to Port Hudson. And there are, there's so much potential for a lot of partnerships. I, I maybe I zeroed in too much on improving the gift shop. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Or, or aren't they actually? Have a note here that they're actually giving up retail space. That's mm -hmm. what I, I for that too. Yeah. And, and to mm -hmm. me, yeah. that, yeah. Was like, that was really like it's almost like, like, like to giving up parking. Yeah. It's like it never happens. Never happens. And so when it does, you're like, yes. They talked about really wanting to make way improve wayfinding and how people that have never been there find their way in. And it is true if you've ever been there, it's a little confusing, but I think because I, I know about this organization, how they have so much support. They're so well run. They just do amazing programming. I love that they're the pilot project with the National mm -hmm. Maritime and Heritage Area. So they'll be working with the Washington Trust who are mm -hmm. doing that management plan. Um, I, yeah, I actually scored this one pretty high. Oh. And I think, it, again, just because I think the whole point of the center is like living maritime heritage and history mm -hmm. and their programming and everything is so robust that I like that they gave they're given up retail. Yeah. I, I <laughs> that they have this great picture of the of the retail space. They have all these like t-shirts yes. sweatshirts mm -hmm. like bye. Yeah. You know, we've yes. got this uh, we've got this great collection of uh, of boat models and mm -hmm. uh, you know things that we're going to speak to uh, you know the mission of all the different entities within that uh, that space. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really really compelling. We also need a point that they're not um, they're not really a collecting institution or mm -hmm. institution. Yeah. 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 So yeah, no, I yeah. think it's I think it's a worthy project. I also had a question. Uh, there was a note that some of their folks would not be eligible for HCC funding. Do we know? Um, there was something there was a comment about interpretation in there, so we, yeah, we would not include that in the scope. I imagine they would 
we do that anyway. Um, but working on interpretive things, if it's again, if it's kind of a permanent exterior signage, that can be funded. But just sort of um, any interior interpretive exhibits would not be eligible for for funding. So. If that's the reason for them converting their gift shop to exhibit space, they don't get funded for it. Does that make the project not go forward? I mean, we can, Heritage Capital can do any of the permanent interior updates. So, any of the HVAC, the electrical, and all of the shell essentially, we just don't fund the actual exhibit pieces and, you know. But, but we can do the entire interior of the building to get like sort of exhibit to themselves. So, yeah. I'd have to go to the other shows again. I got the impression that most of it was focused on the exterior um, heritage um, interpretive installations and the uh, kind of physical needs of that space. Mm -hmm. It's really more about the visitor experience yeah. as much as. Through the site interpreter, we finding the public areas. Sorry, question. Does anyone know? Are, are there plans in motion to use any of the vacant buildings at Park Hudson for the maritime uh, heritage area? No. Big old management plan. I've been talking about for years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So do you feel like you've had every time you think about this, do you have additional questions on it? Uh, um, the question that came to my mind just doesn't come up with preservation. If there are other historic preservation projects, this is still a new building. Why are there plans to just grant funding for us and not have those out? So if I were choosing between this or restoring it. Heritage building or the community center. Yeah. 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 I can come up a little bit though. I mean, for project purpose, I'll change my score. Mm -hmm. HCP also does support a new facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's for heritage yeah. purposes. For mm -hmm. heritage purposes. Mm -hmm. yeah. just what we're doing. Yeah. This one, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's how we choose to balance that, um, that preservation versus interpretation. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> I will offer a thought about community value. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that if you have outstanding, you know, concerns, you share yeah. them. Yeah. 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 Everybody's. I mean, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think we see so many more preservation projects with the heritage component, you know, mm -hmm. that we, we don't see as many new buildings with mm -hmm. heritage only. So, yeah, I, I totally know. Yeah. It's also the size of the house. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any other adjustments? We will close and when we reopen, we'll start with the city of Olympia. So I'll ask Jennifer to shepherd that discussion and I'll start out in the audience. <laughs> and um, uh, how long do we want to take for lunch, folks? We've got half to go and a lot of discussion on that half. How much? Just a 30 minute lunch? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Not right. time for yeah. the break, but mm -hmm. get back to it. So that's right. Okay. Well, 45. And yeah. turn Okay, are you ready to go? Okay, so I have the pleasure of chairing this next application, which is um, the City of Olympia's application for Phase One Facility Design and Construction of the Olympia Armory Building. Um, a request for a million dollars. Um, who wants to jump in on this one? Do Angela or Terry want to? Take the lead on this one. <laughs> Don't want to get you guys up there. <laughs> we 
thoughts? Have some thoughts. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Um, I think on the positive end of this one, I thought there was a lot of robust planning um, demonstrated, and this had a really outstanding historic structures report attached to it. Um, and I'm just kind of balancing that with um, there, there was a, a public facing um, public facing documentation that wasn't included in here that's available um, through sorry, I'm talking and trying to read at the same time and I realize that's not super productive. Um, Oh, okay, there was a, um, a creative campus uh, concept plan. Um, and that actually, this is, this is one of the, I, I, you guys all know that I've got a longstanding um, kind of issue trying to balance some of the goals between uh, heritage capital and building for the arts. And this, this project is actually called Uniquely Suited to the BFA program. And I'm just really curious as to why it has been brought to HCP, um, in a, especially because it was uh, su suggested so strongly that the, that it was the, the, the perfect um, offer to have a project for the other grant program. Mm -hmm. I know we always struggle with the back and yeah. forth of that every single every single session. So okay. <laughs> that was my one. Um, I had the same thing. But, um, I love the fact that. It's the planning and stabilization of the building and the architectural, it's great, but, but the long term goal is really for arts creativity and not for um, historic uh, interpretation. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of a kind of a semantics thing in a way because you are saving a historic building, but its purpose is really for that. Yeah, I thought it hit it out of the park on the historic preservation piece. Mm -hmm. I and I actually scored it high because I I think that obviously the city is you know the, the capacity is there. They have over a hundred percent of their match in hand. I have no question that the project will be able to move forward. It's an amazing building. I think it's a yeah, it's a worthy project, but I also had the question about which group program is it better suited to. Jay, do you have any insight into that, or does it, it just came to us and it's eligible? So, um, yeah, we didn't discuss the other grant program. I mean, they we don't allow folks to apply for other state programs right. mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. HCP. I think there, there's just a lot of emphasis on it being a historic building. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, there was there was such evidence of like this long history of community planning behind mm -hmm. this, and I just I just felt like if the heritage aspect of it was mm -hmm. uh, you know well suited to this project, that that would have been evident throughout that longer planning process, and it, it definitely is for the arts and culture aspect of the project mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so again, that 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 dynamic just is is really difficult for me to uh, to balance in this one. Terry or Angela, do you guys have thoughts? I I I had the same comments. Uh, I I had said that it was um, a little light on history, um, and uh, that it, the building obviously would be stabilized. Um, and there would be a large public use, but history was a small part of the um, center. Did anyone want to adjust any scores? I mean, it's great to save the building and what mm -hmm. you're planning to do in this project is, is great. It's just the it's a lot of money that we're giving out of this program, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the other applicants that are more long-term history related. So. 
for me, the, the long-term history access value in this seems to be in the structure, you know, mm -hmm. ma maintenance of it over time, and it is uh, it does appear to be a very significant example of uh, this, this particular style of architecture. And that, that I think that's the strongest aspect of it within the scope of this, but not as the project itself. I think there's you know a significant value in it for the community for sure. Okay. Any other comments before we move on? No changes in scores. Okay. Move on to the next one. Move my chair back. Yeah. Move up the chairs so. now. I know we're going to come up with them. Um, it's going to come up again in one of the other applications, but a public development authority. Um, I know this is not the first, uh, but actually, for historic Seattle was the first public development authority that's been funded through this program. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they're the first, but they have been funded at least, it, mm -hmm. at least a recent one. Um, it, it, it brought up more questions for me about the dynamic of. The types of projects that we might see in the future, um, not specific to this mm -hmm. this um, project itself, but I, I, I'd like to know more about how that might function with the grant program overall. So that's a note for you. Yeah. <clears throat> so I thought it was a good project, you know, overall, but, um, you know, for Preserving a historic structure is always a good thing, um, and this house definitely needs it uh, as a historic site. Um, with the orchards outside, I thought, you know, um, that the orchards and park access um, and interpretive efforts, uh, I marked on that for access to the community. Um, there were, you know, with it being the historic Seattle community, or PEA, um, they have a long history of um, uh, projects in uh, when in a good time frame. Um, they have organizational capacity. Um, I I didn't have much to really um, knock them down for um, just some concerns. Uh, questions about um, uh, uh, the tenancy, who is right. going to be in the property. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And that yeah. was really the big thing that, uh, as I'm looking through my notes and comments, is the, is the question of the concern of the tenancy and access to public history. But that could also be addressed uh, through a lease agreement situation, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. Or access on the, the park. Yeah, the grounds and the exterior access mm -hmm. are still yes. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I had the same one. And I scored this really high. I was looking for something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And that was the only thing really where I considered a markdown and then didn't give it um, because the future use hasn't been determined. 
you know, so how, how, how do you guarantee the public benefit that you're envisioning? If you don't know, but <laughs> they've done an amazing job of defining the values and expectations and the characteristics of that future tenancy. And they have um, a really thorough process identified for engaging the community to identify the trends to support those values. Yeah, I will say that through contract management, we do, you know, over the 13 year period, require them to have ongoing public access. Again, can't determine exactly the level of that today, mm -hmm. but that is something that staff is working a grantee on, making sure that it's adequate. Um, so yeah. Yeah. that would be a conversation in the future if they were granted that that be ongoing. Mm -hmm. But I really yeah. felt like they had put everything in place except, you know, in the finalists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they know exactly what they want. Um, and they're really clear on it. And they're working with the community very closely. I was impressed with um, the long term engagement um, in the, um, with the Seattle Parks on the grounds work and the investment to diversity, equity, and inclusion goals and the commitment to community engagement. They just, it was a really strong um, proposal in all those regards. I was pretty hard on this one, um, just in terms of that, you know, future uh, historic uh, interpretive value um, being unknown, um, you know, outside of just the basic historic preservation of the building itself. Um, I feel like if I'm going to be hard on our, our, our art partners who are you know, participating yeah. in the heritage capital, it's going to also have to be uh, critical of the ones that don't really outline it very mm -hmm. um, clearly and as far as that, that use value and access to heritage resources. Yeah, that was the only reason I um, graded some parts down, but the, to me, the I mean, I certainly would fund this because the house itself is so important, site is important, and what they're planning to do is is all really well thought out. I mean, we do have the problem about how they're going to use it afterwards, but I mean, the fact that they're saving this, this incredible building and uh, and the site, mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll work to, to get it, actually. Um, yeah. I think it's well worth it. The procurement yeah. story was pretty fast. Yeah. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was there anyone who was in, um, not in favor of supporting this grant application? No. I have to check it on the data for yes, no vote. That's why I didn't want to make those hands on. I don't think there's anything. Like Just judging by the scores, I would say there was no one who was. Is not well, you gave it the lowest, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I actually Good. didn't feel that the application was grant ready without that main um, use goal, mm -hmm. um, at least being outlined. Yeah, and and I, I mean, if there's somebody who can argue in favor of what I missed in terms of that use and its uh, value for heritage access, I think. Absolutely going to go to that. Yeah. Anything else just for the purpose of pushing the conversation? Didn't they talk about their old tenants and how the building was used before they lost it and that they hope to bring some of them back? Yeah, I think that's one of the areas I, I got a little distracted by the, um, the the narrative around that that prior tenancy and uh, the, who, who had ownership over the building. It seemed like there was a pretty a pretty sour history uh, being communicated there, and um, it it kind of made it hard for me to see what the vision for the future was. It felt like it was very much stuck on. Um, I can have a contentious history. So more about what we don't want to do with the building rather than what we do want to do with the building. That's a better way to state that. 
No, I still think it should be funded though, because it is a it's an important site mm -hmm. and uh, an important building, I guess I should say, and the relationship to the parks and everything. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that is a again, I agree that the future use is a little unclear, but it's very unclear. But um, still, we're being asked to <clears throat> preserve the structure mm -hmm. itself. So I would say we probably should do it. Just wanted to put that out there for the purposes of this being a million dollar request mm -hmm. and um, if it is entirely weighted on the historic preservation and aspect of the project then Right. Yeah, 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 I'm looking for like that sound one, but I can't find it. But at the, at the end, um, uh, let me see, describe the plan of place for ongoing history interpretation. It's not really the same. Mm -hmm. um, they include community access to history will take the form of free or affordable programs, tours, and lectures hosted by Historic Seattle, as well as programming hosted by our tenants to be determined, but they'll be community groups. <clears throat> The grounds and areas of the house will also be affordable options for private parties to host events. There's more than one. I mean, if that sound like it jumps at the owner, um, I think a lot of the other might have been. That looks like it's contingent on both um, activities of historic Seattle and the future tenants. So it's not yep. just the future and, tenants. And Seattle Parks. Okay. Right. So there's there's three entities that are going to be doing varied levels of programming, um, which may contribute to why it's not why it's crystal not. clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that. Among those three, those are all pretty fun. Mm -hmm. We do two of them are known, right? And we're live. Sounds a little bit like the work that they did with Washington Hall with uh, Washington Hall in Seattle from uh, back in the 80s. So we were uh, building, we did stabilization and now I have a community and it's mm -hmm. the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Community nonprofit, the problem is focused. focus. But that wasn't known at the time of the foundation. So I think they have a track history of upgrading the communities. Low cost public programs and tours on garden works is true. I think at the prior um, grant recipient, they definitely got some mm -hmm. points in, in favor of uh, their ability for sure. Okay. One of the things I know they had um, as the comments is, you know, of course, if they develop a their interpretive plan we could consider exterior interpretive panels or some way signage or you know yeah. to get the gardens mm -hmm. or something like yeah. that. Jay, I think this is that um, question I was asking you over email about um, you know if we have a project that you know, say we don't receive the entire phase uh, progression within the grant project and the, the you know really explicit interpretive value that is not included in something the HCP funds. Mm -hmm. Is that actually part of the 13 year monitoring or is it separate from it? And probably we don't have a <laughs> <laughs> well, we do include project purpose in the contract. Mm -hmm. So that we do based on the application and some standard language that we have about public access and include in uh, contracts, that is part of the monitoring. That is part of the contract that they sign. Again, we can, we, we define it broadly. Okay, mm -hmm. These are the types of activities that are going to take place and there's going to be preservation where that's applicable. You know, it will continue to follow the Secretary of the Interior Standard. Um, I, I will say that. Um, we're, we're working on getting all the monitoring in two flux. <laughs> so um, that's going to be a big step. And we hope with all these applications coming into flux that um, they'll be able to more consistently report out annually mm -hmm. about the activities. And we'll have that in, in the essentially the annual report that they need to mm -hmm. describe how the public is accessing the property and the history. And it needs to be in accordance with what was provided and what was put in the contract. So. That's definitely something that we will monitor and 
of all the applications um, and make sure that it is sufficient uh, for the program purpose. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on the garden house and grounds for the implementation of Strokes Act? I, uh, I want to point out that in their design team, they do call out, they have a DEI area to call it Ryan WMP, which is a user expert in innovation building and strategic planning. And that's a class that they have to do. And then they have to do it. I'm actually going to talk about my school. Uh, could I do project planning for the team? And work with the team? Okay. Um, so I as we get further down the list, I think that these adjustments are going to be more and more critical because <laughs> these are the folks who could be subject to a cutoff potentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or yeah. So and we'll have an opportunity yeah. to expand into it. Yeah, we will go back and we'll look at the whole list. Sure. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do some. So we can get cookie and Don't look like you're enjoying the cookies so much because poor Terry and Angela have no cookies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're terrible. The cookies are terrible. Like yeah. cardboard yeah. Yeah. Are terrible. <laughs> Chocolate's all melted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The price we pay for not being there in person. <laughs> All right. Are there any further changes from that? I think you said no, right? Close it. Um, village. A couple of comments on this one. Okay, so if this is in the Wenatchee National Forest, it is way out there. Has anybody mm -hmm. been there? Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. you have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're asking for $667,000 if it's to rebuild the Home Village Portal Museum. So I say rebuild, but I think it's from the ground up. I'm going to refresh myself on this. Well, it, there was one before, but it was destroyed because of the, another project going on. Right. The mine. Yeah, so they, they are building a new building. So it's a new building, but yeah. they haven't seen it's it before. A, it's a new, yeah. it's old function, new building. Yeah. Um, and they're calling it the Portal Museum. So who, who had comments to me? Uh, yeah, I have a few questions and I was trying to dig in and look outside of the application a little bit. I'm confused. Is it National Register eligible or is it listed? Holding yeah. a village? Yeah, I'll yeah, go on the site the village. Is it a district now or is it is it is it listed or is it eligible or is it not eligible? Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that was so what are the risks of Wildfire because either control, but <laughs> <laughs> they've been threatened by it before. I also wanted to see we have a lot of positive things and uh, ask you to, to jump in right now. I, I know a lot of organizations are looking at this sort of things to put on hold, use institutional knowledge. Um, Big question. Are, are they prepared? Yeah, you know, I I had the same question just about the their ability to move ahead. I I scored them high on project planning. I mean, they've been planning this for I think I wrote down 10 years. They have 100 percent of their match in hand. They've engaged SHKS architects, they're just top-notch. You know, David Strauss has been working on this. Um, and it seems like they have momentum they had the groundbreaking in 2022 they've got community support but i'm just i guess i had questions about um any like experience administering grant funding since all it looked like all of their match was contributed by rio tinto by the, mm. the company that you know 
the mining, mining, the mining company. Um, not that there's anything wrong with them getting that money to move ahead. I just, yeah, I just had the, those capacity questions, but I, yeah. They've been doing retreats for years. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I heard yeah. about this place long before I even came out here because the Lutherans were involved and I was, um, once upon a time, I was one. <laughs> <laughs> and people actually would come out and work there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they've been running a, a center. So I think they, you know, have some management skills. Mm -hmm. um, I, my concern about this was they they talked a lot about the Native American, they're going to talk about the, um, you know, the Native American and the land and, and whatnot, but I didn't see much involvement from Native Americans. Um, I, mean, they have I feel like that's a catchphrase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And similar concerns just about stakeholder expectations. There were some uh, comments in here from the Holden Miners reunion group kind of expecting portions of their videos and artifacts to be included in the new exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't just the, the phrase portal museum to me, like this is an interpretive center, which I still think you know, fits within this grant, definitely, but it's got much different long-term uh, management needs than, uh, than a museum, collecting museum does. And the collecting aspect was really unclear to me, and that was kind of the only, only the flag. I am not, I'm looking at reserve, and it is not coming up as a registered property. Or says it has been collecting for the past 10 not years. It's not an inventory from this. I found some full inventory forms, but I didn't, I looked for it as well. I didn't see the nomination. In terms of the new building within an NRH eligible district, what sort of study have they done? Because they're not going to have an average cost on this particular site. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there isn't a lot of um, to I don't remember there being a lot of historic insight to the idea that the site itself. There were some design documents that showed the new um, facility within the site, you know, yeah. and how, it, yeah. you know how the elevations and you know, the different mm -hmm. access points work. It looks like they've they plan to hire this storyline exhibit designer mm -hmm. for development to develop the plan for the museum collection. Mm -hmm. So they have some sort of collection. It says they're doing it for 10 years. Oh, they are collected. Now. They've been collecting mm -hmm. and they're yeah. going to. They do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw it in one of those. Howard Rivers House four or five years ago now. And it was, it was like in my gymnasium upstairs or something. Mm -hmm. And it was just it's this crazy collection of mining related. It's fascinating, mm -hmm. but it's also very static. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, it really does need to be brought to life. And curated, maybe. <laughs> it does. It mm -hmm. does. Well, I think with the, the fact that they're hiring somebody like Storyline, mm -hmm. it's going to be able to, to make sense out of it. I mean, the problem with stuff like mining, any of those big equipments, it's, it's hard to interpret those things outside of being a mine. Well, <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, of what's there yeah, is it's a lot related of to the lives yeah. of the miners <laughs> right. and who, 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 had, who were stuck there. Yeah. And, like so stuck <laughs> that the mining company provided a bowling alley and, a, yeah. and an ice cream yeah. shop. Yeah. 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 They definitely were stuck. Yeah, community yeah. town on a, on a micro scale kind yeah. of. Um, so it's, it's sort of a fascinating story, but it's a very uh, tightly prescribed, frankly, but story. They also say though that they they want the village history retold, and they note that the Colville Federation and Yakima Nation will be consulted, so to make sure there's tribal 
history representation of abuse. I think they intend to, to have a broader history shared. I think they'd also um, focus on some environmental, just overall site history too, mm -hmm. looking at the Alpine Valley. Mm -hmm. And refresh my memory, was this project not before us last by any and then not funded? Well, or not. We, it was not. How come we, I've seen this? Or Well, anyway, never mind. In another life. <laughs> no. I mean, it just seems well, so it's familiar to me. I thought, yeah. Okay. Um, I had a few comments um, about ways that they perhaps could work to increase community value and expand um, their reach um, and thereby their project purpose that they're in such a remote location that it would be really great to see them have traveling exhibits and curate, you know, in, take their stuff out into a more urban environment um, and thereby encourage those folks to come in. It's quite a trip to get there. Um, but that would increase the public benefit of the collection quite a bit. Um, and then, um, again, because of their remoteness, there's a sense of exclusivity. Um, further, uh, I think, enhanced by its um, Lutheran, its religious um, um, foundations, uh, which could be discouraging for some folks, not particularly folks of color. Um, they do um, have a connection with Adriano Caminos, which is a Latino community organization in Chelan and, and Wenatchee. So that's really encouraging. Mm -hmm. And they've been working on uh, justice, equity, mm -hmm. well, maybe Jedi, <laughs> See, diversity yeah. and inclusion. Yeah. Yeah. It just wouldn't come all at once, yeah. um, which is really encouraging. Um, and having experienced that community, I know that it's heartfelt. I don't know that it's effective, but I know that it's heartfelt and they're moving in the right direction. So uh, those are just some, some thoughts that I that I had to offer. I think that they do have an important story to tell, but it's a small story. And so the more that they can get out of their um, site boundaries to tell it, the more effective they'll be and the more public benefit that will be. That doesn't relate to this <laughs> application, though, mm -hmm. just to build an on-site structure. Which, which actually, I think, is it does relate because they, while they are remote and um, they do just, I mean, in terms of the local community, there's not a huge number. There's a lot of people who siphon through this thing every year uh -huh. uh, from all over the country. And as I said, I heard about it long before I came up to live in Washington State um, mm -hmm. um, from the upper Midwest. And people knew about Holden Village. Mm -hmm. And and so they do carry that story out. And in fact, when you do have campers and these groups that are there for a week at a time or however they are, they they will benefit from, from having something like this. And in many cases, we'll be more interested in some senses because they're they're on a retreat. Yeah. And so, yeah. and they're mm -hmm. here. And they're, no, they're, 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 yeah. they're, and they're one to learn. Yeah. 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 yeah, I I do think this is a, a good for them to do. I mean, it, it orients these to all these visitors from all over. Um, to this place, and yes, while it's Lutheran based, um, you know, you're going to get families and groups and whatnot that are probably a little less Lutheran than you know than others. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you know that big, but I, but I do think that you know, it, it's not just it's not something they just come for a religious experience. No, I think no, they're coming no, for no. an outside. Outdoors. Kind of seeing and an outdoors experience and learning about that area, they're gonna they're going to be naturally inclined to. Well, I'm here. What is this place? And mm -hmm. I've never been here before. Maybe I won't come again. But and then they carry this off. So mm -hmm. um, I think it has has real value. I say my one concern would be they have to make sure that they do include, um, you know, people, not just. One-sided story. Hopefully, 
with the people they have there. Um, since they have a history in education anyway, I think it's not history education. They do educate, do lectures and programs and whatnot. They do know how to relate to people. Uh, and then with the help of professional designers, good builders, they hopefully do a good job. Mm -hmm. And it is in the eastern part of the state. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Any desire to add church to Could I change my operations and maintenance to 15, please? Mm -hmm. Move it. Mm -hmm. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. All right, Sumner, please. City of Sumner is requesting $315,000 to preserve the house. <laughs> <laughs> the historic Ryan House. It's a rehabilitation project um, focused on accessibility. I thought the budget seemed low for the scope. Feasibility study and design was really focused on the functional building, but maybe not a functional building for that explicit purpose. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I think one example was that functional soda counter. Yeah. And there's no there's no plumbing or fixtures associated with that. Yeah. And it, it just seemed like a really tall order to then put that onus on the historical society to provide that function. Yeah, there's just some kind of disconnect to me between the scope and the budget mm -hmm. and the planning. It, it felt like, I mean, this is a you know clearly a city designed and, mm -hmm. and you know led project, and I think in that context is really good. But it was the you know the historical collections are owned by the Summer Historical Society, really an absence of better documentation about us and the left wondering like what that role was. And uh, you know they even mentioned or the city uh, applicant mentioned. Um, not wanting them to lose their independence, you know, as a as a separate entity, but also that this was something that they were wanting to do expressly for them. So I think that the intent is there, but I don't see how they're going to get to it without like a better understanding of who has what responsibility, kind of in the long term. Yeah, it also looked to me like a chunk of the match is still outstanding. And that that's always what, yeah. Was that a, um, you said it was the tax, uh, <laughs> what's the tourism one? Was that where it was? Tax? Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, the no, lodging tax. tax. Oh, okay. Was it a lodging they tax? They were counting on future, they were counting on a future, future award. award. Yeah. 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 But that's them giving it to themselves. So the first person would count on the one, so they have a lot of competition for that money. Yeah, yeah and it, Oh, yeah. And okay. they didn't, there was no indication that there was any sort of backup plan if they don't get that funding. Like, there's no, like, we're going we're gonna to launch a capital campaign or we're going to apply for other grants or. We did get um, an update from okay. them that that 400000 was recommended okay. by the. Or that was used it, it, yeah. and okay. the applicant said that there's often very little change. Okay, oh, that's um, good. So it sounds like a funding, 
even more secure than okay. um, it was in some of the applications. And in their application, I believe they or they told us so we will get notifications in early August about this, and so they followed up and let, let, us, they let us know that they did get advanced for the next. I think it's uh, <laughs> County Council now approved it. I'm not exactly sure of the whole process, but they were letting them know they well, it really is in danger. Yeah. There is that aspect of this one. They've had some rather severe problems. And, uh, and if it's strictly a preservation project, I think I'd be more in favor of that than rehab at this point. Why? Um, just just because of the long term operations uh, being the, ex the expectation of that being uh, something that the historical society would participate in on a very involved level, but I don't see that documented here. You know, even as far as a letter from that organization. Mm -hmm. that what that no, this sounds like it's like a serious course correction. You got a city owned asset mm -hmm. that's been occupied without a lease, sort of by the gentleman's agreement by the local historical society, probably, mm -hmm. you know, a very uh, uh, informal operating, you know, dynamic for a long time. And nobody, and, and it fell through the cracks because mm -hmm. the historical society probably thought the city should, should take care of the building. Mm -hmm. The city probably thought, and, and nobody did, and it became storage and the program wasn't, wasn't effective because mm -hmm. So I'm seeing this as the city saying, okay, we got it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna lose this building. Yeah, we gotta ramp it We're gonna lose this building. Mm -hmm. So that's their first priority is 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 secure it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and that will figure out what our relationship with the historical society is relative to this building. That seems like the right order <laughs> mm -hmm. of approach, although it's not ideal. I feel like they're doing it, or I, I, they they say that that they're doing it explicitly also to um, for the historical society so that they can occupy the space. So it's a it's a commitment on the part of the city to the historical society. Yeah, the city's kind of <clears throat> assuming that the historical society is going to be able to step up. But they, but I wrote in my comments that the city's committed to ongoing maintenance and operations funding. I must have read that somewhere because I read <laughs> <laughs> in there. I yeah, didn't see I that. Really see, I, let me, it's, I think it's in there. I, but I just say they, they kind of lack a track record on that, at least related to this building, right? So, but that's that. But, yeah. I find it. I read it. It seems to me that they really need to do a rehab rather than a preservation mm -hmm. so that they have the flexibility for different kinds of future use that could contribute to the building sustainability. So if you don't make it accessible, if you don't create meeting spaces, if you don't, you know, keep that wedding venue kind of option in mind, you could foreclose, you know, money making opportunities mm -hmm. for the building in the future. So I think rehabilitation is the right course. Um, uh, but so even just from that public meeting aspect to it, you know, it had it had restrooms, but it didn't have like a kitchen facility or anything to support. You know, you, you know, something as small as what we're doing in here today. Mm -hmm. it, it does feel to me like there needs to be a more solidified agreement between the city and the historical society. Mm -hmm. I just pulled out this paragraph that says. Mission and planning. The city requires the Sumner Historical Society to use a more focused mission of telling Sumner's history rather than collecting old things with no provenance. <laughs> no, <I didn't laughs> <read that. laughs> so then it says the role of the rehabilitated facility will be rotating displays and education, not collection and storage, collection, storage, and research as it has been in the past. So it sounds like the city want, wants to dictate sort of how the historical society manages the collection, which you know, belongs to them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I did. I made that comment too. That it sounds. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole lot of flexibility they're talking about. They're talking about. Um, uh, we want to meet, make the space flexible to make change community needs and ideas within the framework of a museum. We want to build up 
one idea and we locked into that use alone. Um, but, you know, as any of us who worked in partnerships, you know, eventually somebody has to take ownership of certain parts. You know, you can't, you can only run by committee for so long <laughs> in a certain degree in that sense. Um, so I think that does have to have to be done. But on the other hand, you know, I, you do have a building here that at least they're trying to make a commitment to. Uh, they are making a commitment to, the city is making a commitment to, and they're, and it's in danger. Mm -hmm. um, and if we don't do something to it, it's, it's not going to move forward. Um, so I'm, I'm always the ever the optimistic soul that mm -hmm. I think, you know, Thank we ought to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we gotta, they, they do talk a lot about vandalism and mm -hmm. misuse, and if, they, if it's not funded, the historical society will remain homeless even longer, and they, in the collection will have to stay in um, storage. I think Angela is just unmuted. Did you have something to add? Oh, I, the only thing I noticed, I mean, one of the things that I noticed was that the historical society admitted that their numbers were dwindling. So mm -hmm. I kind of wonder how much they can really take on in terms of the programming and the interpretation even after the work is done. And I think there was a comment like they've slowly closed, you know, shortened their days and hours because they didn't have the people that could help it was part of the issues that they were facing in this space. Yeah, that, that's a long term. They, they also have one other thing in here that they were going to do, which is just a very minor thing that I can tell them they're going to hate doing it when they said the restrooms will be available to the public oh, yeah. to the outside as well as uh, and I thought that's somebody who hasn't used that this very often <laughs> so I had a really positive note at the end of this application after I really wish that they had been a little more gracious with the historical society mm -hmm. in their characterization mm -hmm. of its past use that, that just happens sometimes mm -hmm. and it's hard but um they had they had a quote in there. Um, this facility should be Sumner's other housing mm -hmm. for everyone, providing space to gather and explore topics. Da, 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 da. Um, and um, and then the other thing I liked was um, they had a sentiment of rebuilding the house that built Sumner. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they expressed um, broad engagement for storytelling and connections well beyond the original plan with family. Mm -hmm. um, through more active use of the property. Lastly, free admission. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, those things kind of served me, um, their efforts at connecting to other stories of immigrants and Native Americans' uh, experiences with that pioneer family and their space and the pioneer family um, and, and the house for everyone. Mm -hmm. that, those sentiments spoke strongly to me in the end, um, and I ended up screaming for help. This is one of the applicants that actually took something like the core AAM standards and had a written response mm -hmm. to yeah, each one of them. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the specifics of what they responded with, but apparently I liked it quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it um, I, I thought that was a really effective way for um, this applicant and a lot of the other ones to, to kind of talk to those, uh, those standard There's goals. There's a note for the paper. Mm -hmm. Eric. Um, they also have a really strong preservation piece that I'm working with them on this. Oh yeah, they have ARG. They do mm -hmm. top notch. Top notch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's in the this is building in the National Register of Historic Places. Both good. That's important. Mm -hmm. I wish I could find where they said where, <laughs> where the Cape City was committed to funding because that's really key for operations. Mm -hmm. I really want to change my score. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It does say that. Yeah. Oh, here we go. I found it. Yay. The new model realigns the use of this facility to be open, accessible to the public on a regular basis, making it a good investment of public funding and ongoing city maintenance. So hmm. they consider it a good investment. They, they didn't, they're not committing to making that investment. <laughs> <laughs> ongoing, ongoing city maintenance. So right. that leads right. me to believe they're going to they're going to continue to. Yeah. And I, I really think they're at their stress point right now. The yeah. building's being vandalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're going to lose it. Yeah. yeah. I think we need to do this really. I, I do and even though it's got some 
some issues about it. I think that's otherwise, that's if there's, without the support yeah. from us, it's yeah. not gonna yeah. move. Right. And they need to boost more than maybe some of the other ones we've funded. Yeah, I actually did a big one on that kind of project. Mm -hmm. I was interested in the scope. They really drilled down into a lot of issues. If anything, like you said, Jennifer, the scope is pretty big. It's ambitious. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my, my main comment was I'd like to see some prioritization. You know, stabilization first, and then clean hardware and interior finishes. Yeah. And maybe in the next round. But mm -hmm. you know, I, I think they know that, but they just put in everything. Yeah. And so, some of that can be cleaned up in the contracting, right, Jay? Yeah. Well, we can we can definitely focus in on. The critical elements first. Can I adjust my um, project planning to 19 and operations to 15? Yep. Okay. And David, I'll adjust my project planning to 18. Ditto. 18. 18. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was my own typo. Oh. Up to the project planning and community value of 15. Okay. Any further discussion? Any further adjustments? Okay, we are moving on. City of Federal Way. Street. City of Federal Way is proposing a structural assessment and design study of the Brooklyn Community Center. The structural assessment and design study is considered phase one and will develop a plan to determine the resource requirements and potential scope of work for phase two, the preservation and restoration of the community center for Congress. So this is a structural assessment and design study. Mm -hmm. I love that that is what's going to lead the use, uh, the eventual use of the facility rather than the other, rather way, than around. The other way around. Mm -hmm. So and this is where ambiguity was like actually a good thing. And we hope for landmark nominations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Federal way is part of our regional program and they, yeah. Okay. They also have an extensive history of this place, mm -hmm. which is, mm -hmm. was really actually quite an art thing. Yeah, it's, it's like really. Being under the sun is used to plants. But there's a really well leveraged municipal resources at work. Yeah. Well, I was the low score on this one. And the reason, not by much, but the reason is that it was too brief. I just was frustrated with the lack of information. Um, of course, I'd love to know more about how the building is used, but I don't care to know. Um, I wanted examples of ways that the community and the city have demonstrated an interest and commitment beyond controversies, legal battles, and community wrangling. That's both. <laughs> <laughs> um, right? So they've been fighting over it for years, but what is, you know, what? Yeah. What's really at the heart of it? There's so many um, different people used it. Did the city take it on just to avoid further conflict, just to stop fighting? Was just mom taking the toys away from the kids? <laughs> Move ahead, but I, I did. I actually I also marked him a little lower on. Um, it was a community value. But there's no, there's no interpretive there's no plan, interpretive but plan. because they're not there yet. Yeah, so I had to like stop and go. Okay, well, they're not ready to do that. This is this is the very beginning. This is planning, structural assessment, design study. Then to me, that sort of is the next phase, but. Yeah, I just felt like there ought to be at least a vision, even if it's sort of uh, untested or work and better. You know, just somebody's got to have an idea about what this is going to be in the future, right? So that we know that we've got this money and we'll resolve the public benefit, right? And I, I guess I can trust that because it's a, a city project. You know, and you're also 
Well, there's been so many uses of the building by so many different people. Mm -hmm. You'd have an awful lot of stakeholders just from that. Right. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely well. Yeah. Oh. But don't they say that, well, future phase two is, phase one is the planning, mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. structural assessment design. Phase two is the restoration for public use. We just don't know what that's going to be. It's not part of the scope of this. Mm -hmm. Well, they do say they'll host public meetings mm -hmm. um, and identify that intended use, mm -hmm. you know, um, as part of that phase two. Um, mm -hmm. Purpose and that the preservation and restoration is ongoing, which I mean, this thing was building that has such a it's very such a long history yeah. and great for that community. Yeah, um, I did rank them a little low on the operation and maintenance sustainability just because of that. Mm -hmm. You know that ambiguity of what are they going to do? I mean, other than work with the historical society. You know, um, but again, down the way, well, uh, that's another problem for another day, but still, it's an operations issue. Yeah. I also noted that, that the project would benefit from having a historic preservation consultant oh. on team. I don't know that they have that expertise on their staff. I mean, we're. Yeah, I think making sure that. A preservation consultant is part of that design team that this money goes to hire. Mm -hmm. Is important. Angela's unmuted. I don't know if that means <laughs> something to say. <laughs> I was thinking about it, but I think you guys hit a lot of what I was. My concerns were that there really wasn't much community input on the importance of the building, even on a very basic preliminary. Um, that's really what I talked a lot about in my comments and you know where I started scoring scoring them lower um, it just kept saying you know the expectation is there's going to be a wealth of information when we do the research and you know I guess I would have liked to have seen that people were even concerned about anything happening to begin with yeah yeah No, I, you know, reading their history, which is I've been kind of going through the history of the building, I mean, by this, this fellow, it's pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I can kind of understand why the, what some of the dilemma here is, because you've got people with a lot of competing thoughts about, you know, they're nostalgic for what it was, his, what it was going to be used for, what it's being used for now. Um, and the fact that the city has gone forward and, and bought it. Um, and, God, you know, I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on uh, <laughs> about all the different entities. Um, city discovered an old painting hidden behind the main room. Uh, <laughs> future plans for the community center are present undetermined by the city of Federal Way. The current prevailing thought indicates the original clubhouse being preserved and upgraded as an interpretive center for the adjacent um, wetlands park. But the fact that they're, you know, looking at trying to figure out what to do with it, I don't know, it just seems like it's too important a building for it to go away for the city and all the things that have been used for it. I mentioned it's one of the mm -hmm. oldest unaltered buildings in the mm -hmm. federal way area. Right. So that was interesting. Yeah. And there's a great song that's to the um, <laughs> tune of the Battle Hymn of the Republic <laughs> from the women's club. <laughs> Only the women will get things done. That's basically the, uh, <laughs> but it's sung to the tune of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. <laughs> Man. Man, you, would you like to hear that? Yeah. <laughs> I have find strong, it again. <laughs> there's a strong historical society in federal way too that I think that that's really a positive. I just, I, I was thinking, should I adjust my scores? But I really scored this based on the fact that it's for phase one. Mm -hmm. And I didn't yeah. blame them for the yeah. fact that they didn't. I, I hear all of it, but I think I'm going to stick with where I am because mm -hmm. that's how I 
Yeah. And we're also only asking for $52,000. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. Um, I'll just take this opportunity to note. Um, it's it response to a question that came up on all of this. So I think that's okay. But cities are not nonprofit organizations and are not eligible to apply for building permits. Oh, oh, so okay. for mm. cultural centers, arts and cultural centers, proposals from cities, mm. you're seeing them here it's a historic because building they because they can't apply for building for the arts because they're not nonprofit. Why do we have competing requirements like at that level? Um, the state the legislature. legislature. <laughs> <laughs> the legislature but that makes yeah. so You're many of these them. other applications make so much more sense. All this, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah. wanted to, yeah. that's they why I thought like, it was okay. I didn't know that. I agree with Greg, yeah. Yeah, I mean, You're it would be helpful to know. from the state legislature. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, a quick note. I will note we have 10 more applications to discuss. Um, so um, we can move on. <laughs> I, that's my job. Uh, I think that was over an hour. We're moving on. So we, we, we think we agree we want to fund this. So, yeah, yeah. Yes. changes though. Any changes to your score? It's currently 23 or it started out at 23. Can I raise my community value to um, 18? Um, I'm waiting because I can't find any. <laughs> community value of three. Or eighty-nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were not afraid. <laughs> I think we are going to make students now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Stephen's historical museum. Building Wants to construct a new historical museum. And we have a really wide range of scores on this one. So anyone on either extreme wants to start out, you're welcome to. Hey, um, big request. Yeah, I um, think they could benefit for some planning, mm -hmm. museum planning on this. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, you know, building a great big space for exhibits, or, which of course could be built in it. But as we all know, museums have a lot of other functions. Um, there's not anything for storage. They have collections. They have a research. They have artifacts. And, me, and uh, archival material. Um, they went to classes. I mean, it didn't seem to me like they had thought much about any of those aspects of the operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was nothing within the, the um, building plan that really called for collection storage, environmental control. Uh, there's a ton of natural direct sunlight into the exhibition spaces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had some serious. And, and, and I'm sorry, I, I misspoke on one of the other ones. This is the one, this that, is the one that has soda fountain. Soda fountain. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah. But I think the other one also did not have any yeah. ability in it either. And having run and operated soda fountain. Oh, They are, there's not a lot of money at ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> the profit margin is tiny. <laughs> yeah, you guys, I think I, I scored it high, but now I'm, I think I got kind of enamored with the idea that it's shovel ready. Like the city, the city already completed these broader development plans mm -hmm. for the uh, area and they've already done, you know, some, you know, they've done some preliminary work, but then I see too that, that the historical society is going to be responsible for the cost of the interior displays and furnishings mm -hmm. and they just started their fundraising for that. So maybe, maybe I think it's too late. Yeah, maybe this one could benefit from a little bit more planning. And, and also I defer to those of you who are involved in heritage in history museums in terms of the design and functionality and those things. 
had a really hard time looking at this one from that perspective of this also being a turning point for a community mm -hmm. and you know, multiple entities. Um, yeah, I wish they were asking for planning yeah, mm -hmm. uh, rather than running into rushing into. Yeah. They did say, you know, that's going to be, they plan for it to be the centerpiece of the of downtown revitalization. I love that. That's what got me. Yeah. But, yeah. The support seems like it was there. And they talked a good game. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff here. I was, I was harsher on this one. It's more like the, the new building, they thought enough of a piece that I thought of why the new building is needed right there. Mm -hmm. Why, how are you going to design it if you don't know the inside yet? Another building we talked about earlier, they announced encountering problems, people knowing what's inside. People didn't have pieces. So it's a good update beyond where they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I moved the, um, my score, I would move the um, operations and maintenance sustainability down to 12. Okay. Um, operations and maintenance to 12. Okay. And community value to 15. Okay. And David, I'll move my project planning to 15. And yeah. project or community plan. <laughs> Sorry, let's move project purpose to 15. Okay. And Angela has her hand raised. Angela? Um, I'll move my project planning to 18. And the uh, Operation and maintenance down to 15. Okay. And I'm going to, you ready for me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Project planning to 15. And operations and maintenance to 12. For me, project planning. 15, um, project for the 15, and operations 12. Okay. Thank you, project planning for 15. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well done. We are moving on. Are we ready? McCleary? Mm -hmm. McCleary Historical Society. Oh boy, $74,000 is requested for weatherization improvements. Thank you. And I know there's no higher scores on this. Um, I think partly out of absolute respect for such a tiny little community pulling off. Um, what I think is a pretty respectable little museum project. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just, just out of, you know, just sheer desire to support that momentum. Um, you know, it's hard for a small community to demonstrate a, you know, big commitment to operational maintenance and sustainability. You know, so it feels, it, it, you know, it's, I don't want to mark them down. <laughs> um, organizational capacity, I gave them a 20 because they have a sustained operation for over 30 years in this little tiny community. Um, but, you know, of course, they're not as strong as some other areas. Yet, you know, I still, I would love to see us fund this project and support them. So we did that. Agree, and they're also asking for a pretty modest amount of money yeah. for something that's pretty. Um, uh, I mean, they got to fix the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Can't do much without a floor. I love that they rallied around structural, long-term structural needs. Mm -hmm. That's really hard. Yeah, 
you know, but they're, they're already operating. They have exhibits, they have, um, you know, a development organization with a proven track record, and they're able to, you know, get their community excited about structural integrity. Like, to me, that really says a lot. <laughs> Anybody want to adjust? adjust yeah, your scores? I like to adjust um, project planning to 18 and organizational capacity to 18. Sure. I'd move my operations and maintenance sustainability to 18. Okay. Angela's got her hand up too. Um, um, oh, I'll move community value to 15 and operations to 15. Okay. Anybody else? I do the um, operations, the last category, to 16. Could I do project planning to 17? Project planning? Yes. Yep. I'm really wondering what the, the potential risks are to the stained glass and go over the intrusive work. That's mm -hmm. the only thing. That's oh, to like, the stained glass? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're doing, they're doing uh, beam mm -hmm. and joist repairs. I did get more detail needed on window repair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's a great window. You know. yeah. 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 I advise them to get some consultant review uh, for window protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very central to the story of the building, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. We are moving on to the Luska Foundation and Cultural Center. And we have seen this before. And I am like, I I have a kind of a rock bottom score on it. So I should probably tell you what my rules are. Let's see. I do not support funding this application, and my reasons are summarized at the bottom of my comments. The community value of the stated program purpose is not well supported. Um, there are apparent conflicts of interest. It's a family run and governed organization without sufficiently broad representation to balance this family's interest, family interest and influence. And there's a lack of documented support for recognized tribes in Washington or elsewhere. So this is an organization. I just jumped into it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Because I'm so nervous about this. I feel like I'm really awful about giving them such a low score. You know. Um, but they seem a little bit renegade, you know. They purport to be representing American Native American history like nationwide, but they have no endorsement from any Native American. So that makes me very, very, very. Um, so there's that. And then it, it is, it, when you look at it, it's a very tightly run operation. So they're paying themselves, they're hiring themselves, they are, they have total uh, say on all um, acquisitions. Um, they're acquiring things that the family has created. So they're like building, it just didn't, didn't feel legit to me. I'm sorry. If, there, if, if it is, help me get there. So I have the same question. I'm not familiar with the foundation of the community as a user. I don't remember seeing a tribal response, but yes, a thumbnail of the response from all the tribal contacts. Mm -hmm. my, my first thought was, is this appropriation? Right. Cultural appropriation. Is, uh, if someone can clarify what I read the story as being um, centered around this individual collector and the intention behind the people who donated their objects to him um, and with the goal of long-term preservation of not just the object, but the object's worth within a living culture. Is Does anyone else read it that way? I'm trying to, I'm just trying to find no. a basis that we can agree on to start from. Yeah. 
Well, I did see that. I mean, you know, through, through the dance and wearing it. These programs were developed by Chief with the advice of the museum collection. Many of the pieces I used for performance, some of the articles have been belonged to over time. Is a working collection as well as architectural. Somewhere it goes on to say something about um, collected from all over. It's not about a single family, it's about thousands of different families, tribes, and nations. Um, many and very entire replica for trade store, fully furnished. We started out mm. with focus on like one person's carving, mm -hmm. but and it's the family who continued to collect that. They traveled far and wide. And now it's the, the brother of the original carver and his daughter and son in law. And they're continuing to collect their own carvings. And then wrapping around that, this purpose of collecting additional stuff, which I feel like they're just doing to legitimize their ongoing purchase of their own work. Well, what, just, it's, it feels creepy. One thing that's, that jumped out for me in support was that just the, the amount of fundraising, the different sources of match that they got. I mean, it looks like they've all, you know, it, wow. it, was that for acquisition? I mean, this, there were so many, and they're not large amounts. There's just, this is the most varied, I think, of any grant. How many? Like, yeah, there's over, there's like that. 20 different I part of Woodland. There, so, the, the, you know, they, they garnered support. Well, I think they've got a really strong little marketing mm -hmm. business going on. I really do. I think they're doing a great job of marketing themselves. So here's, I'm going to read my notes. I am uneasy about the collection management policy, which does not note any recognized standards and gives extraordinary authority to the executive director to acquire items created by the Laluska family. Quote, the acquisition committee accepts art created by members of the Laluska family on a continual basis. Such acquisitions can be made by the executive director, meaning without any input from anybody else. The executive director is the daughter of the president, who is the only is the extant Laluska Carter. Mm -hmm. And the primary contractor is the president's son, the contractor who would be doing this construction. Um, so these are red flags. The policy is also conflicting, stating initially, our mission is to preserve the collection of art and artifacts collected by the Laluska and other Laluska family members. So there's only one Laluska Carter left, right? As well as recent editions of the Laluska family art that have been donated to the Laluska Foundation. But later, the collection policy notes that the Laluska Museum houses a collection of art and artifacts representing native peoples from across the United States and Canada. So uh, their mission is really unclear. Their collection mission is unclear. It's focused on themselves um, and collecting just their own family work. It doesn't feel like it has the right connections and health benefits here. And I don't, I'm not an art evaluator. I don't know what the value of these cards or its historic or heritage value to a broader community. Angela unmuted herself. <laughs> <laughs> Angela. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I'm just, I just was having it ready in case I needed to say anything, but I guess my question, I understand where you're coming from. I completely see what you're saying. Um, so I guess my question is, is the Heritage Capital Project funding is to help help take care of places that are important. So is that family compound an important place? You know, beyond this idea of of the artifacts, where they where they come from and the history of there. I mean, the way I take it is there's this particular family, they were given this knowledge by a particular person mm -hmm. and they did these public education and outreach things. Mm -hmm. um, and that it's, you know, gone on for obviously a very long time. They reach a lot of people. Um, and the question 
comes to my mind as well. I thought I read somewhere where they were saying the family couldn't really continue this, all this work on their own. They really kind of wanted to change the organization more into a, you know, more of an educational organization. I don't know what we think about that or not think about that beyond who is the person kind of running it right now. Um, so I guess the question to me too is, is, is funding that property the appropriate place? <laughs> is that important in the history of Washington State? Well, you, you, know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. There's also a letter of support from a third grade teacher at Capital Strong Elementary School. He really writes passionately about the importance of taking the third grade students to this place to learn about, you know, Native American culture. And, and he says that if it were, you know, it, it's one of the most valuable and educational opportunities that we provide for our students. My entire grade level team would feel a great loss if this program was no longer available. I, that was a hard tear trigger for me, but I have to say, well, what's the quality of the program that they're getting? I don't know. Yeah. I, there's, there's, there hasn't been anything in here to, to, that addresses the value, the broader value. Well, the, the only thing that, that uh, would argue against that was the fact that is going to put has already been brought up is if you look at the breadth of the funders that have put significant money into this. Um, they're not all necessarily ones that are not competitive. Um, you know, they have to be able to convince that there's been value to this, to something like Pacific Core Foundation, even though if it's only a thousand dollars, Pacific Core Foundation is not all that easy to, to get money out of necessarily. Um, some of these others, I don't even know what they do, but they've gotten significant money from Furstenberg Foundation. I would think that, you know, that there has to be some yeah, um, I, support. Yeah. I mean, the, I, the, and they talk about all the partnerships with the, these other agencies. Um, it's a really tricky one. The other letters yeah. of support are just from, are from, not just, but they're from individuals. There are no other, right. there are no other letters of support mm -hmm. from any other historical organizations, tribes, and it's all individuals other than that one teacher. Ah, oh, this is a really hard one. This is a hard one. I um, really struggled with this one. So I scored this one fairly high. Um, and the, the description that I gave for the pro project purpose was revisioning of living history programs and campus previously managed exclusively by four decades of the Lelusca family an interpretation of a large Native American artifact collection collected by a Native American family for the purposes of cultural preservation. It, it, I, I'm, Angela, does that sound like it, it's in line with what you read from this as well? I, I kind of saw the two part of it being both the living and cultural preservation plus the artifacts. Yeah, I mean, my take on it is it's 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 this particular family member who was given knowledge and information, and then they shared that information out over a pretty long period of time. Um, they're not, you know, obviously federally recognized tribe doing this. They they are very general and broad. Um, um, I you know I see what was being said in terms of, you know, is it the right pro, you know, is it the right information that's being shared? Is it, I can, you know, I scored it fairly high because <laughs> I felt like they checked all the boxes <laughs> pretty general. Um, but I also kind of was worried about, you know, like are we giving money to upgrade somebody's home base and, <laughs> If they have but, a broad, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Oh, no, go ahead. Well, it, it just is such a small, it, it, if they had a board that was representative, that would give me more confidence. 
but the decision making is held very tightly. Maybe that's maybe that's cultural. Maybe it's a family run operation. Should I be okay with that? Well, from the museum perspective, I mean, I think you look at it. Um, you know, Angela can speak to this better than I can. But you know, from a a, a group of people who have a, a relation to each other, you know, that's that that could that could describe any one of our tribal museums. Exactly. Um, and this group has also recently completed the MAP program with AAM. So I wish I could have seen what those recommendations were directly. I think that would have answered some of those operate, operational questions uh, for us that, you know, that we're kind of stuck on. Um, I, I, I just hate to count them out entirely on the basis of in, in you know coming being torn out of an in group. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is where having um, a really clear statement of who the board is. I was curious to know if their um, consultant, uh, who's the name, Metamo, Metamo, um, who was going to come in and look at the um, their proposal for new collections management plan. I didn't know if that was just the collections management plan or if that was the operations in addition to that. I would really love to have known what, that, uh, what the scope of their uh, consultation is going to be. We are asking money for for design. Yeah, part of it. Mm -hmm. board is, is more diversified. We've got somebody from WSU, mm -hmm. we've got somebody mm -hmm. from SPFC, which is a staff at the college. The request is um, some updates to the campus in order to sort of prepare for the construction of the new museum mm -hmm. part of the funding for designing the mm -hmm. museum for kind of both mm -hmm. straddling construction and design. Right. And what's in the scope of that purchase agreement? Does that satisfy your monitoring for those improvements on the property at this point? The purchase agreement? Yeah. Um, but my understanding is they don't completely own the property, or they don't own the property that they're doing the improvements to. Yeah, it's a yeah. bit of a tricky ownership situation. They're sort of in the process of transferring ownership of the property from the family to the foundation. Um, so there's like a tenant in common agreement. And oh. it, yeah, so there is, and we actually looked into that one and um, found the satisfactory for the purposes of monitoring. Okay. But also looking at the fact that our funding would mm -hmm. accelerate that public push to be out of the family, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I really think this is a turning point for a small mm -hmm. rural organization to, to go on a completely different track. Mm -hmm. I think you might not know what that track is without the, <laughs> without the you know, activities that they're asking uh, for our support for. So a low cap is project purpose in the contract. Then. Okay. So, so my, can I just my two cents? Yeah, please. Um, I um, don't support the application either. Um, and for the basic reason um, that I just thought it was uh, too basic um, and seemed somewhat thrown together uh, to me and uh, pretty pretty light on um, the uh, planning. But really it just seemed like a, if just looking at the application itself, um, it was the second lowest score that I did um, so that was my reaction when I reviewed the application was that it was just very basic and light. Basic digestion scoring adjustment. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I would like to adjust project planning to 15. Okay. Um, project purpose to 17. And community value to 15. Okay. Angela has a few days. Um, I wanted to switch my project planning to 15 and the operation and maintenance to 10. And I'll planning 15 on 10. And I'd switch planning. Are you ready? Almost. Okay. Okay, planning to 15, purpose to 15, and value to 15 also. And all across the board. <laughs> all across the board? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read one more you know, section from my notes. Someone mentioned that they would run the map program. Um, the foundation has strong marketing and has made inroads with schools and numerous grant organizations. It's not clear, however, what standards are being applied to ensure the quality and integrity of the interpretive content that's offered, bringing the entire project purpose under scrutiny. El uh, Baruska Cultural Center staff report recent completion of an AAM MAP program. And this is a critical start toward addressing standard practices, but the, the applicant notes that math advisors expressed a need to plan for a sustainable model that's not dependent on family members. So it goes back to that. Um, that Brian was saying earlier, they really need to launch beyond the family in the future. And I'm not inclined to change this. Shall we take a five minute break? I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> and we are looking at Pioneer Association of the State of Washington. It's the Pioneer, Washington Pioneer Hall Rehabilitation. $149,500 requested for structural and access improvements to Pioneer Hall. Um, does anyone wish to speak to this? I had a kind of tough time because it, this kind of organization really uh, kind of a soft spot in my heart for these pioneer <laughs> organizations like this, this group. And, and um, you know, you look at the building and, the, uh, and they're great, you know, People who started it and whatnot, and great building, but it's, I don't know, the building needs work. There's no question about that. But how they're going to use it and what they're going to do, I mean, the library is obviously pretty important to them, but the other part just is, seems a little less, um, you know, needs to be thought about a little bit more and what they want to do. But I hate to see the building go away. It's just such a kind of a, a testament to a time and a group of people and their interest in the, you know, the pioneer history of the state, pioneer way history, I might add. But. Mm -hmm. I I said I would not fund this one, and I did. I just only because I just don't think they're ready. I I feel really badly, but I I just felt like the. The scope seemed really too too big for the budget, and um, I just it, I didn't feel like the project was sufficiently planned, or the organ and I didn't feel like the organization really has the capacity to capacity to execute the project within two years. Mm -hmm. It just feels like there's too too much left <laughs> that, that hasn't been thought through. Mm -hmm. Really worthy project. 
Yeah. Um, I just feel like it's not ready <coughs> for this cycle. Um, and I would hope that the building is stable enough to stick around for another couple of years and then that they come back. Yeah. So could somebody speak to the, the preservation value of this um, of this application in terms of what they're trying to accomplish just from the preservation structure mm -hmm. itself? And they're they're looking to put all of this money toward the design and pre-construction. Yeah. So this is not a construction project yet. Um, I must have read it. I must have read it wrong too. Because it says odd. remove and reconstruct the east 30 feet of Pioneer yeah, Hall. I, I didn't including read a new design. foundation. I didn't think of planning. I thought it was, yeah, I have remove and reconstruct east 30 feet, install yeah. the foundation and shear walls, install oh. interior fire escape, install structural mm -hmm. ties, relocate ADA bathrooms, upgrade mechanical and electrical. So did I miss that? Is, this is that all the things they're hoping to design or all the things? No, no, it says Because that's... if you look at the cost categories. But it says rehabilitation. It doesn't say planning. So they're anticipating no, to look at the, the construction document by 2023. It's it says the documents. Cool. Please see the document while finding a rehabilitation of November 20 for, the, for a deep description of the reasons of the project. Based on recommendations from the architect and structural and geotechnic engineers, these 30 feet shows the most damage will be demolished. A new foundation will be constructed. Um, blah, 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 development construction documents. Um, yeah, and construction. I think most of it's That's construction. Odd. Okay, because up in the in the cost category section, they have nothing under construction and rehabilitation. Well, All the funding is shown under the line design and pre construction. Well, maybe mm -hmm. the well, when, you, when you look at the timeline, they actually talk about plans. Mm -hmm. They discuss a design development phase mm -hmm. and then they go into construction plans as state grant funds, July 23 to June 24. And they, they talk about submitting those plans to the city of Seattle. BCI for building permits. Mm -hmm. So that they're not even considering the funds that mm -hmm. are awarded through the HCP for the actual construction mm -hmm. or description. My understanding is it was specifically for the prep of the construction plans. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So that's why the budget is that's why the budget is small small construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's a design budget. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a design, but it's been worded as clearly not very the actual. Right. Work. They yeah. talked about the work that the design is going to accomplish. Yes. You know, I think well, they're trying to make a case for the, the value of the design, of the work. design work. work. Yeah. Well, which is no. really needed. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I think it's going, they're going to do it. Um, doesn't this grant run through June of 2025 if they got it? Yes. yes. Right. Because their timeline says that mm -hmm. they're they'll finish this year through June 23, the design team, and then they will do the construction planning um, and actually get the building permit, be in construction, and finish the project by June of 2025. Finish the project. Yeah, and the project is to to replace the 30 feet. Well, then the budget uh, is too small. Then. Yeah. <laughs> Total budget cost four hundred fifty-one thousand. That's, that's I don't know when, that, when people put that in. That's that just the grant portion, just grant and match. That's not if they have a twenty million dollar project yeah, and yeah. They're, they're only going to yeah. put in a million dollars and two million dollars. Right. So it would look like a million dollar project. It clearly says under project summary scope: remove and reconstruct mm -hmm. each thirty feet of the of Pioneer Hall, including new foundation and shear walls, mm -hmm. install interior fire escape. In the east, so if it if the intent is for them just to fund the pre-design, that wasn't made clear to me at all. No, no, I no, I don't think it is. The, the intent is to is to do the work. If the intent is to do the whole thing, then it. I don't know that that's under. It's not a very. Well, the the whole construction huge. cost is estimated at seven million. And you're right, though, Mary. Because under the cost categories. Right. The 145,000 under HPC grant funds is for design and pre-construction. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm trying to like focus just yeah. on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and what do you see else saw, but but you're making it hard to do that. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Where do you see the no, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's so much. Pioneer call yeah. estimate 22 0609. Is it yeah. one of the attachments? One of the attachments. Oh. But that might be the whole thing. It's, They're only talking about that. And that, that gives a full oh, scope free, of uh, fee estimate and consultant. It's a, it's a one page document. I see it. Called um, Pioneer Hall Estimate. Yeah. A E free estimate. Uh, fee we'll estimate. Like yeah. Um, and that, that uh, has line items for like the individual city permits, oh, the actual expenses to date. It's right below that. So there's actually a completed design that's attached. One of the attachments is a completed design. So this this is a very confusing application. I want to go back to Jennifer's opening statement, which is <laughs> something along the lines of it. What did you say? Well, did this they don't feel ready. I, the it planning ready. is not lined up. Yeah. Well, the planning might be ready, but we don't know how to interpret it in a, in a succinct way yet. It's too bad because if if they indeed if the intent is indeed only for pre design and construction, then that's one thing. But if it they really intend to complete the project in two years, I don't think they're ready. I don't. Um. It, or they're not characterizing where they are in the project. Um, they've attached it. And I don't think there's anything on heritage interpretation, right? There's no plan for where was there. I, well, I think they were speaking about like their, the tenancy that they have in the building right now, but it mm -hmm. was unclear like what the public access was yeah. outside of the membership of those can you, Anybody can use the library. Yeah. And I think you can go visit if I remember correctly. But isn't that just on Sunday, like a certain number of Sundays a year? Yeah, well, that would be true for a lot of people. Yeah, I don't see that. anything where it says the whole cost is $7 million. No, they had open houses and pioneer call mm. estimates. Yeah, that's one oh. for the interpreter. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's the very first one in the yeah. attachments. Mm -hmm. Project. The other thing that I noted, and I, I said, oh, good job about. securing oh, individual yes. donations, but some yes. of the contributions seem to be outside of the eligibility window to me. Is that right, Jay? Some of them seem too early. No, it's, uh, it's only expenditures that have to be. Oh, OK, years. so they can count. Yeah, they've earned money over a long period. OK, OK, so they can't spend it. So yeah, they're they're quite older donations, okay. event, but it's it's all right for income purposes. Okay. Um, You're right. Please. So it doesn't. Does it? Has anybody seen if they had a historic preservation consultation on this? I mean, they've got a full oh, plan set in here. They're asking us for pre-designed money, but the plans are already attached. And. Um, I'm concerned about loss of, of original materials. They're in the process of submitting for landmark designation. Mm -hmm. If that has any effect on that. Well, they ought to get the landmark designation and then proceed with alterations. Uh, and I don't see any DAP comment. They, oh, it says yes. DAP consultation complete. But well, what was the outcome? They said they're not undergoing historic review as part of their proposed contract. Uh, that's and that the building is listed individually on the National Register as of 1970. Correct. Oh, yeah. super early. Yeah. The other issue with this, which I mean, not yet, um, is that a lot of the planning documents are out, out of date. Yeah. They have a, a strategic plan dated 2000, revised in 2014. And they're both very out of date. Their admission statement is 2020, which is a little bit better, but it doesn't look like they can't work. Their master plan was from 2001. So I, I agree with your opening statement that this probably shouldn't be funded for, at this point, for lack of coordination in their plan. Yeah. Well, Unless it was just for construction planning, or does it still need us to review on top of that? It's too confusing. I mean, <laughs> we don't know what they're asking us to fund. For design. The design's done. Plan. It's attached. Oh. It's the plan set May 16, 2022. Okay. The 
the other thing I questioned if the organization would have the operating budget to maintain the improvements over a 13 year period. I just didn't. Well, true. Yeah. And there's no clear interpretive plan. Right. There's no Do we need to do the score adjustment thing? I don't. I probably will have to change mine because I didn't. Okay. So I need to. I would change. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. Organizational capacity, I think, down to 14. Okay. Um, and, and I move operations and maintenance stability down to 10. Okay. Let's delete the purpose of the other. I gave it a really high purpose. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's a great thing. Uh, but, um, project planning plan. I think a lot of the problem here is just the um, organization. It's just too confusing now that I see. Uh, I can see that things are going to fall down, but hopefully it won't in two years. It said in the scope of work design uh, construction documents with grant funding. You've done that in there too. It was in the scope of work, scope summary. That's how I read it that they were going to be doing construction documents and then going out for bid. Then why do they put the extra three million in there? Maybe, yeah, I don't know. According to their timeline, it looked like they were going to build it, do the whole thing, but then when you look at the budgets that they're brought up. It doesn't match. David, can I change the score for mm -hmm. uh, project planning 14? Okay. And project purpose. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, operation sustainability 10. Okay. I just project plans to um, 14 and organization capacity to um, 16. Mm -hmm. I'll stay with my scores. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Ready? Mm -hmm. Change Depot. <laughs> oh, this one. Uh, they are requesting twenty-two thousand um, dollars for a raised viewing photography platform to create additional space for interpretation and expand visitor interaction. This is a phase four mm -hmm. um, of a multi-phase, multi-year project to relocate, first relocate the uh, depot and then to rehabilitate it. Um, and it's low, no, let's talk about why. John? <laughs> <laughs> well, it just didn't seem to be with this, with uh, the depot and the things they need to do. Building a platform so you can take pictures just didn't seem to really speak to what this program is all about, nor really the needs of that particular um, building. I mean, there's lots of needs that, that need to be done there, but and adding a platform on the outside, even if it does look like a water tower, uh, railroad water tower, mm -hmm. just didn't seem to be very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. To be clear, they, they are doing the rehabilitation of the building right now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is in process. Mm -hmm. That's the current contract. That's in place. So not that that's being neglected. Right. It's an add-on. It's an add-on. Add but... it, it yeah. Is there an interpretive um, component to that prior phase? They submitted an interpretive plan. Will that work be completed in that phase or is that a future phase? Interpreted? Yeah. Uh, 
I'm not sure exactly on the That's the interpretation not the plan, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's quite an extensive argument. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was a lot of recommendations, but there wasn't like coming out of that a set of decisions that says we like this recommendation is in this direction of an mm -hmm. I feel like there is there's a really important step missing in their plan. And um, and that's what really um, kind of I my strongest impression was that they are just getting their feet under them. They need to adopt a plan. You know, they've got this recommendation, and they need to adopt the vision, and then decide, you know, methodically how to phase into it. Instead, you know, they kind of did the planning, but didn't put it, didn't didn't develop the vision of it, and now they're just like off in a new direction without a map. They clearly think they need this additional space for viewing, though. I mean, there may be. And I haven't been there, so I don't know. Like, can you view the train activity? But I had a smile when they talked about video streaming and rail activity. I mean, there are people out there that oh, love that's train. Thing. Yeah, guys. my brother. I can one. see in, in a way that kind of expands their their inter, their audience because I can see people that may want to sit in their living room and watch train activity. It's a great that love would it. be my brother. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hear what you're saying, Mary Grace, but I actually scored this one relatively high because I thought it's just a small amount of money. The request is 21000 so 20, 22000 Um, And they they have such a great track record of completing yes. their, you know, and they've been, they've been planning it, it's phased. And I think they, they're trying to address the whole interpretive mission of HCP. They really want to you know, they're excited about the train activity and they want to share it. So, so, so I kind of saw this as a tool to help them. If they're planning this, uh, you know, they're anticipating their grand opening uh, somewhere between, you know, this year and next. And uh, they talk about shifting from a construction focus to interpretive planning after their mm -hmm. major construction is completed. And I wonder if this is something that plays a role with them engaging their community in an active way yeah, like while they're in that interpretive planning phase. Yeah. Uh, just to keep it alive. So, but how do they gonna, how is this not a major construction project? If it's a viewing platform, you've got to have accessibility. I have questions about the budget. How are you going to get people up there? Yeah. You know, who yeah. gets to use this thing? Just photographers? Yeah, it's a circular staircase at the center. And you can't mm -hmm. do stairs? Yeah, that's, I don't, they didn't address accessibility. How can you build a new structure and not make it a public structure and not make it accessible? Well, the, the streaming does provide interpretive so, access. Mm -hmm. Does that mean yeah. ADA? It's a component of it, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, if there is an issue of physical accessibility at some sense, whether it's addressed at this time mm -hmm. or addressed in future phase, I mean, they could figure out a ramp out. Issue or preventing comparable, you know, or par comparable mm -hmm. visual or however. But I personally ranked it high as well. Um, I've seen success with like um, Lewis County Historical Museum has a great rail fan experience. Um, same similar uh, video streaming um, access with where they've got videos on trains, even when people accidentally turn on the railroad in the car and that's video live stream, you know, and yeah. That so, could be compelling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really gripping. So, really, that could be great. Oh, it happened. <laughs> but, um, you know, the make the news and everything happens, oh. but, um, so it just, and then the fact there is this opportunity to also expand interpretive efforts, not just on site, but worldwide. So, okay, but could, yeah. just yeah. for sake of argument, could, isn't it possible to, to make videos from a certain height without building an elaborate interpretive tower that yes. only some people can go yes. up in? Yes. I mean, can they still achieve that? Yes. I just, in the long term, yes. They don't have their plan in place yet. You know, how do they know this is the right move for them and, and the right use of their money and their land? Um, well, that that was my thing that I I don't know that. I mean, I could see actually just building the tower to make the whole site more visible. 
more visible and more complete in the sense of that, but to build it for, you know, a photography platform, when it seems to me they don't really have much of a plan for using the whole building. I mean, they've, they've got a lot of excitement that went into to moving this building and getting it settled. It seems they have to also figure out now how they're going to use it, um, the building itself, without a whole the other building. building. Right. That was kind of my. Well, I mean, concern. this is why I think that interpretive aspect is so yeah. important to it because, I mean, if you compare this to something like, um, I can't remember the name of the building now, but the, the Seattle uh, PDA um, project, you know, mm -hmm. here you're looking at a million dollars to rehabilitate. Or preserve a structure, mm -hmm. and this is a new structure that also has an interpretive function, mm -hmm. and it's kind of it's kind of the same. It's the same thing, technically. Well, except that the the PDA, the other one, it seems to be that it in itself is a it's an important historic structure. This is something that's going to be just recreated yeah. as a. You know. In fact, when I first saw it, when they first started talking about a platform. I didn't realize until you yeah, looked at the pictures that it's actually going to look like that it was going to look like a water tower. So at least it had some connection. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're trying to enhance the visitor experience there. Yeah. I think they're trying to add just a little thing that will draw families and so little kids can be up there watching the trains. Maybe you don't see the train activity from the depot and maybe they think photographers will come and they'll, I don't know. I just, I just think for $21,000, as long as they can accomplish this, it's, it's a portion of what their interpretive strategy could be. Well, and that's my problem. Mm -hmm. they, they cherry pick one element out of a whole menu of future possibilities, and they want to charge ahead on this one. They're not even done with the museum yet. And I don't know, maybe not that the point. It was just like that, but it just seems like it hasn't really been well thought. Mm. Well, yeah, it has all sorts of the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would suggest that we continue moving on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. any, any score changes? I'm going to stick with my score. Mm -hmm. um, okay, me too. All right, good. Sales standpoint. What's this one? A community boathouse for all in Magnuson Park. Current boathouse facilities are unsafe, well, unwelcoming, and not fully accessible to all members of our diverse community. SSP sales standpoint seeks to create a welcoming, inclusive, interpreted, fully accessible, and world class community boating center to engage more people in boating and to provide safe access to boating sites for many for all. $272,000 is requested. Well, I voted not to send this one because I don't think it, it meets the purpose and guidelines of Heritage Capital Grant. There's no heritage component at all that I could find. I think it's, you know, it's a worthy project to, you know, for people who want to vote and, you know, have that recreational activity, but I just don't see how it fits the guidelines of our program. Doesn't the building preservation itself? But I don't see the heritage piece. Well, and the all. preservation aspect within um, the report from Miller Hall states that there is no preservation value for the structure itself. So I'm kind of confused why they're moving ahead on treating it like a preservation or rehab project if those values haven't been established mm -hmm. somewhere. But they're, because uh, they offer they do mention different. landmark designation. Is that in the works or not? For our magazine park is a historic district. So it's part of the historic it's district. district. It's a, it, it, so it's it a is district. a historic building. Yeah. And it would be in the historic district. district. But the work is not preservation oriented. It, it is a rehabilitation, mm -hmm. right? But the purpose of the, I don't see any discussion of heritage at all. Did I miss it? Did I you guys see it? I didn't see it. No plan for history interpretation, no discussion of best practices, um, no maintenance plan. 
And on the quick note that this is another one where we had to refuse the request because of um, match components. Uh, and so on your sheet, it says 310, but uh, 272 is the, is the maximum request. Okay. Is there a kind of site control aspect to this as well? For, for the nonprofit? This was a Seattle Parks and Recreation was the property controller at this point. Yeah, so they are property controllers in process. They are negotiating a long term lease with Seattle Parks. Um, and there are a couple like that. Mm -hmm. We have in the past allowed this sort of in process leasing. Um, the, recommended for funding, mm -hmm. uh, as long as that lease is in place before the contract is executed. So depending on kind of how confident you feel like this negotiation might be. So I just really would have wanted to see Seattle Parks and Recreation taking a more proactive role um, given the complexity of this project, you know, especially with mm -hmm. even just designating mm -hmm. what is a historic preservation uh, goal for the structure. Uh, before trying to enter into a use agreement with a separate nonprofit. Because I think they're going to get stuck with a lot of decision making that could, could be outside of the scope of what they're capable of. Wow. My reading is an outlier on this one. But um, I'm interested in your thoughts because I. Well, I mean. It's, um, they talk about, let's see. We will adhere to preferred history field standards best practices. We have not identified which standards we'll adhere to yet, but we'll take this step as part of the design and reforecast process, starting to reforecast. We will take this step as part of the design and reforecast process starting immediately. Um, and they will be um, following City of Seattle Historic District guidelines. And other proposed best field practices are required alignment with the numerous stakeholder agencies involved will likely share commonalities with the museum standards. We'll work to understand and follow these guidelines. So it's a lot of promises. You're right. And this and is estimated to be an 11 to $13 million site rehabilitation project. And they'll adhere to the Secretary of Interior standards uh, under the leadership of Miller Hall. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that they were in a, a Seattle historic district obviously gave me a lot of confidence yeah. that they would, that feet would be held to the fire. And these are important and beautiful buildings. Yeah. So all of that told me, okay, you know, yeah, this is this yeah. is this is the really in a context where it's going to be held, you know, even if the immediate you know applicant writer or mm -hmm. these organizers like organizers don't quite have their act together yet. But they say the purpose is to create a welcoming, inclusive, and in interpreted, fully accessible and world-class community voting center mm -hmm. to engage more people in voting and provide safe access to, and oversight to the lake for all. So to me, that's that's like an active voting center. It, it, I, I, right. So the thing about where they are, they're, they're, they're in the naval. Yeah, but so but that's the whole but, history of the there anything voting. that talks about heritage? But there isn't not anything yet. that's going to do heritage there. I agree with not Jennifer yet. on that. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. that's part of their design plan. Well, do they say we're gonna we're gonna have a heritage? They talk about interpretation mm -hmm. and they talk about, yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're not very good about it. You're right. <laughs> I am I'm not trying to defend their weak right. point. I'm saying, though, that they know that they need to do it. But and that voting is part of the history of that building and that entire site. And what they're doing is making that water access through this historic mm -hmm. building. Yeah. It's a continued similar use. It's, yeah. It's a, it's a, and not only that, it's a, um, a paddle use. If you took the historic building out of it, would there be any support for the project? The, no. One of the op options that Miller Holt gives yeah. is it's a complete it. replacement of the structure. No, it's, for me, it's it's about that function happening in that building, mm -hmm. not and in that place. 
But it does say that they actually, the boathouse will not only afford access protection, but through the interpretive signage and installations in the addition. Oh, okay. Developed through emerging and in existing partnerships with the study story of the region's history that people have come before in the building's contribution. I mean, their, their um, public impasse statement was impressive to me. And when you have that many young people and um, people from all different, you know, places within the local society coming through that historic building and accessing an activity that's not easy to access because of the equipment and the knowledge and the skills, that's a really cool thing. And who are we if not? I mean, it's a maritime heritage thing yeah, to me. I think ultimately it could be a very good project. I mm -hmm. just don't think it's there yet. Like, I feel like there's a planning step that's, that's missing. What, okay. what's, what's the step that's missing? Um, it, it's either really narrowing in on the preservation goals of that particular building mm -hmm. or the interpretive. Mm -hmm. um, but, but since they're both so weak, you really can't lean on one or the other yeah. on this at this point. Yeah. Except that they said that they'll do it as part of the design. Mm -hmm. This is a tough one. There's going to be so many moving parts with all these different mm -hmm. permits and agencies. And stuff. Yeah, all yeah. I yeah, saw that, all those permits. Yeah. <laughs> it's over at Spawning site. Mm -hmm. site. They've got yeah. really mm -hmm. sophisticated planners working with them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I raised this in the on the like, higher end, maybe because I hear them on, oh, they're using, they're adapting this boathouse to support the building and going to be able to have views, but you're right. I agree with both Mary and Mary Grace. I did not help. No. <laughs> this is hard to yeah. I feel like they could have highlighted a better um, the preservation strategy Definitely. and the heritage aspects, but I wonder if they just didn't have the language at the time. So I, I really don't know what to do. It might just leave my scores as is because I'm sort of like middle ground. It's not a bad project. It's just not a competitive application is the way I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. They did think all the gap. I did see that in the meeting there. The whole story of how I had gap complications. So I might recommend that we keep moving. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, so we are we are past time. So Mary Grace did sway me to fix some of my scores, but okay. they were really well. So <laughs> so for oh, project and Angela Olson, sorry. Pro project purpose, mm -hmm. David, I'll um, make it 15. Okay. And for ops and maintenance, um, 15. Okay. Angela, sorry to, um, I need to ignore you. Oh, project purpose to 15. Okay. And I need to back my project plan score down a little bit. Um, Can I focus on the project purpose 18? Right. Uh, any further changes? If not, we are on the historic box theater. Oh, we're on the city of Aberdeen. Sorry, city of Aberdeen. <laughs> No one commented on that it was all in terms of time. What did oh. I do, though? You mentioned the contract. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize that. You just started the show. Okay. <laughs> Aberdeen is seeking to purchase, design, and construct. Already purchased it. They've already purchased it? Yeah, it's designed. It's about a mountain home. Yeah. It's 205. It's really the design, yeah, mm -hmm. for a museum in inside a building that they have purchased. Mm -hmm. City Which is, yeah, so they sort of incorrectly listed the mixed box categories. They just split it two thirds, one third in all in both categories. Mm -hmm. They purchased the building. They're going to use the purchase as match for the oh. planning. So yeah, to clarify, that's right. Uh, so they're well over the mm -hmm. Yeah. A building in downtown Olympia to be used for museum purposes, including storage operations and public engagement. Aberdeen. 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 
The city would like to hire a capital project manager to oversee the design, architecture, and engineering of special inspections and permits. This seems found a prettier building. I actually like the location. Mm -hmm. Location is good, yeah. Make it something yeah. wonderful with it. Mm -hmm. It actually yeah. is having it, having a lot of pictures. Parking. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. awful. Yeah. It burned. Mm -hmm. So my notes are that it's a modest request and a modest start that seems appropriate for the capacity of the organization. Yeah. I would do this because they're really talking about design and hopefully bringing the right piece to get it done right. properly. Right. And that's part of what this is about. I didn't score this one super high and it didn't score it super low. And the only reason was I felt there was some lack of clarity about the museum design aspect mm -hmm. and who is going to be involved in that. And I don't know if that's just an oversight because this is a replacement building for an existing organization. And it's kind of like a given, yeah, of course, we're going to use these people and the same management strategy, but that's not really explicit in the, in the application. I don't, I don't know if there are things that have changed as far as personnel or who's going to be informing the museum part of that whole design mm -hmm. process. Yeah, and there, um, there was not a plan for community input to the mm -hmm. <clears throat> More information is really needed to feel confident that these emerging plans are responsive to the community's needs. Yeah, I didn't score this very high, but I did say I would fund it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody want to change their scores? No, I think we ought to do this. This would be a good thing for them. Yeah. Could I do community value? Mm -hmm. That was my highest score for them, was community value. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to amend my community value this one. Historic Fox Street. Anything else? Anything from our online panelists? Nothing that hasn't already been shared. <laughs> I scored it pretty low. I just felt like they just didn't have enough information on the value of the museum to their community. Okay. Centralia Historic Fox Theater requesting a million dollars for restoration. Um, project summary states that the theater's sole mission is to restore the, the project's mission is to restore the theater to its original 1930s grandeur. This is phase four interior and theatrical restoration. Restore decorative plaster, complete the entrance. Lobbies, artwork, seating, theatrical lighting sound, and upgrade the stage house. John, you were the jump on it, big. Well, I didn't give a real high score. I think there's a, um, you know, I think it's a laudable kind of goal, but everything seems to be pretty general. Uh, there isn't a lot of detail about what they want to do, why they want to do it. Um, I mean, what the basis are for what they're doing. Um, I mean, I think it's wonderful for the community. I think it's a really high score in that regard, but I was concerned about um, not having, a, a, as I said, just kind of a, a we're going to do all the finishing touches. We're going to meet historical standards. Well, meet its original grandeur. And I don't know that. Uh, and then um, how they're going to support it after it gets done it was the other part that I was a little less um, convinced by. Uh -huh. Actually, I thought the impact study they had was really robust as far as like valuation of the future staffing needs and the market and like revenue potential. Um, but I'll mm -hmm. definitely agree with the, the proposal for this project. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. It's really wishy-washy on the like what specific features are being proposed for restoration. Um, it's not a bad project. I just 
it's just again it's not super competitive yeah i just don't think it's ready i think they're they don't have an ed in place to to really help shepherd this forward and it's a really ambitious project for an organization that's looking to then during this contract period needing to hire an executive director um i didn't think there's no hsr there's no specific planning for this project mm -hmm. the bid seemed incomplete to me and again, I gave it 20 for community value. I think this is the type of project that's just awesome, but I just don't think it's ready. Right. I agree. I agree. I agree with all of that. And there was one really concerning concerning uh, The reviewer listed for local historic review is not a local city county official, but a historic preservation consultant in Virginia. I think they just yeah. yeah. They, they um, yeah. And and if they do have a historic preservation consultant, why isn't it someone local who knows local conditions, mm -hmm. environmental conditions, building materials? They um somewhere I looked at this one because all the questions I read through didn't just be here. <laughs> <laughs> I know this building. There's a long way to see that one. Like, but some of the uh, Technically, like some of their bids are outdated. Mm -hmm. They just listed the standards. They didn't address them. Mm -hmm. um, they mentioned Evergreen architectural data results, but I don't know if that's current. You know, Evergreen is great. Yeah. That might have been, I forget what year they were consulting. So I just feel like they, they're trying to ramp back up into this. And I, I think it's going to be a great potential project. Yeah. Huge impact for community value and economic tech impact, but um, the application is. Just a little bit less competitive. It breaks my heart because the theater is near and yeah. dear. Like I said, I hope the city's funding is still available in the next biennium yeah. when they're ready. You know, and yeah. they'll, yeah. And I think in, in, on a positive side, it's structurally stable now. Like mm -hmm. they're in the phase where they're doing interior mm -hmm. finishes. Yeah. That's not as critical for right. having right now. So, all right. Anybody want to change their scores? Gonna keep us moving here. One more, guys. Two. Oh my God. Two. Two more. Okay. Ready? Magnuson Park. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Transform a historic World War II military maintenance building into an indoor neighborhood of arts and technology and athletic. Costing one million dollars. Yes, I think. This is one that didn't have site control, yeah. so I just want to check in. Mm -hmm. Do we have updated information on site control? No updated information. So, so do we just not even consider it? I just say no site control, not mm -hmm. enough planning or information about the organization to support funding at this time. I think in the past, the panel has approved recommending funding for site control that is in process. Um, but, you know, making that judgment based on how likely you think that site control is, because we have in the past had projects that are in process with a long term lease or other site control that have been funded. So I don't think that alone is a reason not to consider it, um, but, but it is an option. Mm -hmm. It's the same situation as Hillside Point. Hillside Point, and um, you know, like um, the lighthouse, the Coast Guard lighthouse yeah. um, right. uh, from uh, last year. Mm -hmm. Where they were negotiating. Was the yeah. So there, there have been other examples of projects funded with um, leases or management agreements that were settled between the time of this panel meeting and the contract execution. So. I think the, you know, the lighthouse example, that, that was a one that had some pretty clear preservation and interpretive values. I, I was really, again, was, this is one of the ones that just didn't rise to that. Neither one of those really have shown themselves as a, as a strong suit for this project. I would agree. I didn't see a lot of, um, again, it seemed like everything kind of um, 
there's not a lot of specifics about about it. You know, concerned about the is parks going to take on? Are they going to, are they going to run it um, and pay for it? And also, it's not really um, kind of like some of the other ones we've talked about. It seems like the programs are really not geared for this history interpretation as much as they are. Um, you know, recreation, mm -hmm. athletics, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, I hate to argue with those things. <laughs> See, to me, kids don't learn from the signs on the walls. Right. Kids learn when they experience. So when a kid walks into a building that has this amazing, you know, airplane hangar entry, they get wowed by that. That's enough. That's for enough. now, you mm -hmm. know, it's because when they get older, their curiosity recalls. They recall those things. It's the you know, it's the, the dial phone that you remember, you yeah. know, not maybe even the building it was in. So it's those little things, it's that, it's that experience that builds the basis, the foundation for them to touch back to later yeah. as it. But I think it's just a like great big open space now that could be, I don't think, I mean, I don't know. I just don't see it as, as kids will see it as like some of the other buildings you went, which are kind of a wow, this is a, it's a big open building with when you go mall. You know, once it's kind of fixed. They'll know the difference. You think? I, uh, if, the, if the rehabilitation is done well, you know, if the building doesn't get hidden mm -hmm. by something like Target. You know? Yeah, see. <laughs> you know, I, I think this rendering allows this yeah. rendering to them no favor. Sorry. <laughs> not, not Maybe for that's what I mean. <laughs> but, but really, I mean, if, it, if this is a good rehabilitation project, you will see the bones of the building and people will experience that. And yeah, rehabilitation is about a new use. So do so. you feel that there's enough information in this application to award them a million dollars? I mean, that was my, I mean, aside, the, the site control aside, I, I, don't, I don't feel convinced that they have the capacity to do, you know, to do this project in two years. Site review. Yeah. And that's a pretty good grant. Yeah, they did say that. Years ago, they've got, they've got, they did get good. I just wanted to point out too, this is also Magnuson Park. Mm -hmm. And it, it has the same fundamental problem that the sales standpoint one did in terms of like a lack of understanding or figuring out what the preservation value is for the space mm -hmm. and passing that along to the proposed future tenant. I just look at the renderings and for me, they look like they're going into a big... I know the renderings could go into the Skateboarding. Yeah, it's like total fun. <laughs> Actually, it looks like a lot of fun. The building <laughs> itself to me is huge. It's and you really think that's enough? That they don't really talk about the heritage. Well, the, the, it's a historic building that will be held to certain standards, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're requiring a level of interpretive work. Um, our intention is to embrace the industrial rugged quality of the existing structure. So that any required alterations will be performed in a way that will not radically change the spirit of historic character, defining spaces, retaining its features or finishes. I mean, kids playing lacrosse in an historic hangar, that just I just get I get excited. <laughs> it's good. It, and and it seems like they'll do sustainability. Yeah, that's that's an issue. I just want to know what the historic features are. What are yeah, the elements that are true. actually important? Mm -hmm. They have photos of the Existing building tonight? Don't, I don't yeah. think. This was one where they didn't attach separate photos. There's a few photos in the one of the packets, some of the people. Yeah. It's like this, this is a vision rendering. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. Um, I just I just don't think it's something to base, you know, preservation or heritage value off of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They, they did they did a poor job on the application. I gotta give you that. <laughs> Which is 
Well, if you look at the fact that they are going to rehab a historic building that otherwise what is going to sit empty? Well, no, I, I mean, I would hope that they would continue working on it and come back, right? Or, and I just feel like for me, it's yeah. they're not ready. But. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess the operations and maintenance is still in the way. It's just the state. Well, I don't think all of the stuff is the But I think a lot of the stick to me is. David, I'll, I'll put my up a little bit. <laughs> 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 I'll, do, I'll do the project purpose 15. Okay. Um, community value 15. Is that for the goals of HCP or the goals of the tenant? I think it's. I think <laughs> Sorry. The community, well, I think the community value. It's it's for the goals of just the of preserving the building. I I, I really gave it a low. Yeah. Let leave it at that. Can I also um, operation sustainability? Mm -hmm. Can I get a seventeen? Okay. And same for project. <laughs> Ready to move to the yeah. final mm -hmm. final mm -hmm. is Seattle Chinatown International District Preservation oh. and Development Authority is seeking a million dollars for a Little Saigon landmark project. Um, this response to community needs for affordable housing, affordable commercial space, and a gathering space dedicated to celebrating Vietnamese history and culture. The project will serve low income individuals as well as provide affordable commercial rents to small businesses. The gathering space will be a social and cultural hub, providing programs and resources. Project. Yeah, this is a fifty-seven million dollar project. Yeah. <laughs> is there more info on site control? No. Um, well, so the documentation we provided was was unclear, but it did look like they were in the process. Of they're trying. They're mm -hmm. yeah. They were. It wasn't there a draft purchase and sale agreement, and that was it. Yeah. Right. So the, that was my biggest issue. Me I didn't too. Know whether to score it. I I what I wanted to support this, but and I think it's a really worthy project, but without site control, I can't see how we are assured that they're going to be able to complete the project in two years if they don't have site control. And it's, yeah. Well, that, I put that in there too, but if it looks like throwing together, you know, I could raise that, but I was also concerned, you know, I mean, there, it's, I wonder, let's see how did I word it? Um, is this while traditional Vietnamese cultural preservation is targeted for the cultural center portion, um, it's not convincing to me that the project overall fits into the purpose of the heritage capital grant. It's more of an economic and housing mm -hmm. project. Yeah, but, it's an yeah. But <laughs> this felt like a project that was. The scope of it is so enormous. Like it's going to get done. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Without and me. whether or not that component is in it or not, it's still going to get done. Um, mm -hmm. Like if they were to come back at a later date and say we want to do this for that that cultural center, great. Let's let's review it. But mm -hmm. I think like the boat's going to sail. Mm -hmm. But yes, that was my reading of it. Um, it's another it's, it's 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 having trouble goal. logging into the. Yeah. I can't. I can't get into the actual thing here. Or that. 
Um, but it's just to echo to this piece, Freya, um, they actually explicitly state that if they don't get funding, mm -hmm. they'll just find it elsewhere, mm -hmm. you know, and that uh, everything's kind of a wash. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's like, you know, it's fine if you don't fund us. We're still going to do it, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's mistake on their part. <laughs> that's literally what they come across mm -hmm. in their application. Well, to me, that kind of speaks to the value of it as a as a heritage project. Yeah, right. no, that's exactly with that angle. So Which is you know, I need to be. I literally, you know, drop that project. I mean, based on yeah, it came across purely as economic development. You know, then added the heritage mm -hmm. component mm -hmm. um, as like that second half. Um, and with the affordable housing, the commercial interest, while the cultural component falls short. In the organizational model for governance moving forward, they have an MOU. There's like three different parties. Mm -hmm. And the MOU is only in effect, in effect through December 2023. So all bets are off after that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they'll figure well, it out. Uh, yeah. the we'll get Sustainability of a project that you don't know that they yeah. have property competition. Uh, yeah. David, would you adjust in my community values? Yeah. Any other changes? Yeah, I'll adjust my uh, for project purpose to 15, community value, uh, I guess 15. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Can I um, project purpose? Thank you. Community value. Yeah. 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 Yeah
it was all over the line. This is the problem. Under when you get to 10 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you give us just two minutes to fix this spreadsheet? Yeah. Oh, where's, where's the 10 set up? It's going to be right after Fox Theater. Well, or sorry, it's not still sound. Still sound. Still sound. Funding up through Gail oh, um, But once through. we don't have Fox. 9.7. Um, do you know if they have a conversation about like, if there was a margin of funds left over, you didn't award it or because um, awarded recipients chose to decline it for some reason? If there were a margin, could it be available for cost overruns relative to the post pandemic construction? I did not, I was not able to award them. So I think we should not go on that though, just because it's our understanding of have a legislative appropriation for mm -hmm. you know, Our hope would be um, to be able to, if someone declined, to be able to fund someone who is not funded. So I would say if there are ones on this list that you do not think that you do not want funded, I think they should be we moved should take, we should take them off first. Um, mm -hmm. And then We'll have the ranking up to 10 million, and then I would still like to leave any, I would like to leave the remainder ranked in an order so that if we are able to move declined funds to another project, which I, we're still figuring that out, if that's possible in the legislative process, um, that they're there, that they're there, and this panel has kind of approved that remaining order. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would move to um, uh, take off the list. So remove from any any funding possibility in this round. Um, uh, the last four currently on this list for sure. That's Maluska Pioneer Association, Magnuson Park, and the Chain of Command. And we'd be open to conversation about 29 and 30 sales. So no, I like that one. <laughs> I would be open to historic Fox theater um, staying on the list or coming off. Um, I'd be inclined to leave it on in the funding discussion. He's here. He's unmuted himself. Oh, okay. Who's here? Okay. Terry, are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just checking on you. We can't see you. Yeah, I dropped off and then it popped back on. So. Okay. Did you miss any discussion? Do you know where we are? You you. Did you make a motion to drop the last four? Is that what I heard? Yes. Yeah, okay. That was the last I heard. If we fund, I can't really see that far away, but if we fund, we zoom in to that, that bottom section. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, the, yeah. the Fox Theater, mm -hmm. we, would we only fund it? At Partially. Today? We'd give partial funding. Is that what we're thinking? Because it goes over like, so it looks like um, sales time point is fully funded would move the total up to about 9.8 so it'd be about $200,000 if you wanted to give that portion to Fox Theater that would certainly be within your prerogative um, or you could we've given less funding to others haven't we or, well yeah I mean there's I mean, lots of places where we could um you know, take a little here, take a little there. Mm -hmm. We felt strongly about funding Fox Theater. I seem to recall their scope is varied enough that they probably could do something with that amount of funding. I mean, they still have to, they still have their match, right? They have a lot of match from the city. And they, Jay, could they choose not to use all of the match now? And, you know, if they came back in two years in the next biennium, then apply the match that they don't use. Yeah, oh, yeah for sure. They could do that. Yeah. Any, any work 
done beyond the current grant project could count as match for a future for future. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, it can't be counted twice, twice right? But right. If it's not counted in this project, it would be for future. And you're talking about box, right? Box. <laughs> Well, I have no objection to that. If you the, drop the final four, and um, grant partial funding to the box mm -hmm. Could somebody clarify the purpose of the project or the project work proposed for sale standpoint? Is that planning only, or is that actual construction? I feel like the Fox Theater restoration is lots further along in terms of planning. I mean, one site control is being a but there's not comparable. <laughs> there's there's so much bigger than the other buildings. Um, the sales standpoint scope is yeah, it's this design. They do have um, site survey permitting. They have something called stakeholder outreach listed in their scope, which is not an eligible expense, so mm. that would not be um, appropriate for our contract. But it looks like um, to design report drawings and models, kind of the lean position developed and right side for this land, which is what they're. I think there's does that imply a preservation or some sort of preservation review or historic structures report or <laughs> the way I the way I read the um program mm -hmm. they have all these different processes going on. And so they're in the design and feasibility and permitting survey monitoring. So um, those are all in the very depth of what they really did to how to address the issue. And the box, they're, they're asking for a million. So I think they'll probably need more space for the habitat. But that. With that whole body of work, we were not entirely comfortable with because we weren't clear about the historic preservation consultant the direction. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, could, Jay, can, can you offer them a certain award? And if they, they could decline it, they could say, We can't do any, we can't. Oh, well, well, certainly, yeah. yeah. If, if you were to give them 210,000. Mm -hmm. For the remainder, they would have the option to say decline. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think one of the things that we said that Fox needed was preservation consultant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we could fund them to a level that was often that bring up bring up preservation plan or the budget. Did the mayor ask for any funds? We'll note that Terry Methods said he has a hard cut off at four. So if we are able <laughs> to come to consensus in 10 minutes, that would that would be yeah. preferable because we will need a, a, a consensus vote of the vote. entire panel. So mm -hmm. okay. well, one last question. You said there's a big sales standpoint that this is eligible for the funding. If we reduce their budget by that amount. There it is. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. they, they were one of the match. Well, that was a match issue. That wasn't a scope issue. No, but that's a scope issue. Um, unfortunately, yes, you would, you could reduce their amount because of that. We don't have a specific number because we didn't attach numbers to the scope areas. So we don't know exactly how much they had sort of budgeted for the ineligible portion of the scope. Mm -hmm. But you could, you could. Make an estimate and guess and <laughs> reduce uh, their. How much, how their much is uh, how much is sales standpoint? That's for 272. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's for 272. I think now that I asked that, I have to make the reasons I asked because the cost of survey, the cost of everything right now is so unpredictable. So, yeah. 
it's up and down. I think no. we should just stick with funding 29 through 29 in full and, and $210,000 to the Fox Theater. Fox Theater and ask them to target that money for mm -hmm. preservation consulting right. to review any design work that's been done already and to help them uh, plan. Mm -hmm. a and they could do something to you can. The remaining I think we did, we did a lot of hard work to get there, and I feel really good about that. Yeah, I think it's it's otherwise, we'd be, yep. we'd be jumping around. Terry and Angela, does that sound amenable to you? Yes. I think that's okay. My only concern in the Fox one was they had made this comment that if they didn't get funding, they would lose momentum. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> so we're well, so we're going to help them keep their momentum. We're going to keep them. <laughs> we're giving you two hundred ten thousand dollars <laughs> momentum. momentum. <laughs> yeah, I think momentum is can be dangerous if it's moving in the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Give me a second. I think I seconded. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. So, am I understanding correct that the four remainder are removed and we're not eligible for funding this year? Right, this year, this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we can. Now we can. Well, time here. So. I know. Okay. Well, I feel bad for the pioneers to do. Thank you, Angela and Terry, um, for joining us right. remotely. Well, it's too bad, uh, though. I mean, I hopefully get it. it went smoothly enough try so hard. with the, the digital access. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.